Red Hot Comic Book Movie News. Defenders of the Earth. Defenders. The Weekly Planet. The Weekly Planet. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of The Weekly Planet, where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. Mason, come on. My name is James, also known as Mr. Sunday. Movies and comics and TV shows. <laughs> with me, there he is. With me as always, my co-host, Nick Mason. I'm on a slight delay. <laughs> We're not recording in separate rooms. <laughs> I've just decided to oh, take a little decided. bit longer to think about things. It's not that you're a dumb guy. No. Okay. <laughs> no, it's not that my brain is dissolving slowly. <laughs> well, good. I'm so glad. I'm just taking a little extra time. So just to know? clarify, you're just being rude. Yes, I'm just being rude. <laughs> okay, great. Mm-hmm. Do you know there's big news this week? I bet there is. I mean, people could... I've abandoned the bit. I'm okay. Not gonna do it. It'll be torturous. <laughs> For everyone. I cannot... No, I mean, as if we were going to maintain really any bit, but especially well, that, that, is one. True. <laughs> yeah, that one. I'm doing great and I'm quick as a whip, James. Wow. As always, quick as a whip. Quick as a whip. Mm. Did you know uh, someone who's quick as a whip is John Wick? Because we're going to be talking about John Wick yeah. Chapter 4. There are time codes for all of the information. If people want to skip to anything, Collins, who edits this, he's kind enough to put them in the show notes. We're also going to talk about the first look at Lady Gaga mm. as Harley Quinn. We're quick as a whip with a podcast equivalent of John Wick whipping somebody in the balls with some nunchucks. Does he do that? Can we add that to the theme song? John Wick, like you saying that? We could add it. We could or add the it. sound effect of the. No, it's something, you know, because it used the, sound, the, the, the theme song used to be Red Hot Comic Book. Movie news shooting up your butthole. Yes. Maybe if you red hot comic book movie news. John Wick hitting. Being, being, being whipped in the nuts with a pair of nunchucks. <laughs> the equivalent of being hit in the nuts with a pair of nunchucks. The Weekly Planet. The Weekly, the weekly Planet. Pl- I mean, it's something you know. to think about. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's less rude, right? I mean, it's, yeah, it's less rude. Mm. It's weirder. Is it? I don't know if it's weirder. How about taint? <laughs> being whipped in the taint by a pair of nunchucks. But the uh, pop culture, the pop culture will equivalent of the yeah, weekly, yeah, planet, the weekly planet. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Unless you come to one of our live shows, in which case you will be getting whipped in the tape. What about our, like a William Shatner esque, just spoken word version <laughs> of, the, of the lyrics? Oh, okay. You can just cut this and put it in. Yeah, okay. Well, that's yeah. probably true. Just some yeah. space music, and then I'm just like, what if <laughs> you were being whipped? It doesn't matter anyway. <laughs> so, Lady Gaga. Oh, yes. Zack Snyder's uh, announcement concerning the DCEU. You're going to be excited for that, again. Mason. Mm-hmm. Some Star Wars news and some firing news for Star Wars and Marvel. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, a Disney Indiana Jones spin-off series has been put aside, Mason. Wait, gonna, what does that mean? They're not doing it. <laughs> okay, right. Probably. Mm. Uh, we're going to get into what's going on with Blade, mm. and then we've got a whole lot of news in relation to what happened with Shazam and cameos and oh, The yeah. Rock and all of that kind of. There's been a real hullabaloo this week, Mason. Speaking of cameos, do you think we could get any of the stars of the movie to do a cameo where they explain what's going on, just really dish some dirt? They seem to be doing that themselves, Yeah, really. they do, don't they? <laughs> but, yeah. yeah, no, I think that's very possible. Mm. Anyways, jump around if you do want to. And then we're going to talk John Wick 4. Yes, that's right. John Wick Chapter 4, no subtitle this time. Thank you. Yeah, why is that? Why does this 3 the only one? It's going to be called Parabellum, something. Was it? It was going to be. John Wick 4 something something and then they just cut it. Who knows? We'll never know. Nunchuck nuts. Mm. <laughs> uh... Nunchuck Nananza. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. It was going to be called Bullet Bonanza. Mm. Then they put the nunchucks in and they're like, well, we can't resist. No. <laughs> <laughs> and it's too, it's too late to change the second word. Yeah, so. no, you wouldn't. You couldn't. Mm, you shouldn't. Yeah, yeah. Oh, but speaking of his... Um... Oh, you got your one bit of news? Well, I was going to... Okay, it's an unrelated bit of news, but before before I saw John Wick in the theatres, they did a um, Mission Impossible 8 trailer, like a little featurette. Oh, yeah. On, uh... So I was like, this is real. Movies yeah. are real. So this was the... Movies are real. <laughs> this was a behind-the-scenes stunt. He did scream that a lot. They had to edit that out. <laughs> There's just a lot of shots of Christopher McQuarrie, like, looking at his sound guy, like, can we cut that out? Can we cut this out? Can we? But it's the featurette where we see, we see it's the last part of the previous trailer where... Uh, Tom Cruise, and it's actually Tom Cruise, yeah. uh, getting on a motorcycle and zooming off a cliff and then base jumping in a little parachute. Movies very are, close. Movies are real. Very close to the ground. Movies are real. Uh, and there's a moment in it, and, and it is like on a big screen. I, I'm, you know, we've seen a lot of it on TV. Sure. And I think it probably people are watching it on their phones. You don't get the scope of it until you see him doing it on a big screen. Okay. And it's just the, just the, like the, the, the quick pan over the cliff. I'm yeah. like, this is terrifying. And there's a moment, they do it a bunch of times. They never explain where the motorcycles go, like oh, right. how many motorcycles they've burned through. Yeah, I mean, he d- didn't he do it like 40 times or something, something like, like that? that? So yeah. 40, right? Just a, just, <laughs> a, just a graveyard of 40 
smashed up motorcycles <laughs> at the bottom of the cliff and then they just leave. <laughs> yeah. Buy people of Tibet or wherever. <laughs> or wherever we are. Enjoy those motorcycles. That's just a reminder that movies are real. Yeah. Maybe you can make a, I don't know, a still out of them or something. <laughs> Um, but he and there's a moment. Um, there's a moment where he, uh, yeah, he he does one, and then he's like, "I think I could stay on the motorcycle a bit longer before I jump off here. I like, I could, I could be a bit closer to the motorcycle before I run the shoot." Good. But anyway, I was going to say a bit of bit of fun casting news. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know if you saw this on Instagram, but Christopher Christopher Macquarie, Christopher Macquarie, Christopher Macquarie, mm-hmm. a bad little boy. Oh, is he? Uh, no, he's a good little boy. Okay, good. He's like, I'm so busy. He is very busy. I gotta talk to my sound guy. <laughs> Tom Cruise keeps, keeps Tom Cruise. He keeps saying movies are back and are real. Yeah, they're movies are real. <laughs> movies are real. Uh, uh, but he announced that uh, returning to the cast of Mission Impossible is the great Rolf Saxon. Yes, uh, who people will probably best know uh, as the guy who vomits. The guy. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna find his name in this. He's uh, in Mission Impossible 1. He's in Mission Impossible 1. He's the guy at the computer that Tom Cruise they, infiltrates. It's the, he's the guy, he's the linchpin of Mission Impossible 1 because he's the guy in the computer room that Tom Cruise has to get into and, and get the data. But, of course, he's in there and he's doing his important computer work. So uh, the, the Mission Impossible team, the IMF, they have to poison him. Poison his coffee yep. and make him do lots of vomits and poos. Yeah, and then he has to. He spends the rest of the movie running back and forth doing vomits and poos. Do you think he's still doing vomits and poos, and that's how it comes back? <laughs> I mean, he's looking. He's got a big beard. He's not. Yeah, looking, he's not looking particularly great. And he look, was like thirty nine when he filmed that. Yeah, which is my age. Mm. So that's good. So, but what's you know? Obviously, he he's probably because they're bringing back um, Henry. Zerny, who's the guy? Yeah, is the the voice of the uh, Mission Impossible like audio tapes. Hello, exactly. Precisely. It's Mission uh, Impossible time. <laughs> mission Impossible time. But you, you talk- can't but you can't do this mission. He talks when you talk. So uh-huh. like you go to be like uh, and then he goes, That's Mission Impossible. Well and then it's a pause. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and as soon as you go, he goes. That's great. Yeah. Um but I, you know, obviously he's going to be back for, you know, probably some small role, you know, yeah. maybe he's a little higher up in the organization now or something like that. But I like to think it's it's a Fast and the Furious style. Like he's been plotting his revenge Ooh. for 20 years, you know. Do you reckon he works for IMF or they just like outsource their recording? So they're just like, read this. And he's like, all right, I don't know. Yeah. Like, you know, like oh, is, he just yeah. a voice, is he just a voice actor looking for work? That's a great point. <laughs> like He's like, is this for a movie? And they're like, yeah, yeah. I mean, in the first one, he and Zenry Kzerny, mm. uh, at, the, at the end of at the in. Oh, he's like physically in it, is he? Is that what you're saying? Yes. The guy, the voice guy, th- as in like the guy's like, this is your mission and whatever. Yeah, he's back for the new one. Yeah, but like, but he's actually in the movie. In the first one, yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. He's the, he's the guy that uh, Tom Cruise has the conversation with in the restaurant. Oh, Kittridge. Kittridge, yes. Yeah, oh, I didn't realise that was the voice guy. He's the same guy. Okay, yeah. now, I'm get, now I'm understanding. Okay. It's been a long time since we've been It's been a long time, one. yeah. Great. Well, this is all good news, Mason. It is good news. Yeah. Anyway, that's been one bit of news. That's, one, that's a couple of bits of news. You snuck in there. That's right. We also got our first look at Lady Gaga. Lady Gaga. It's Harley uh, Quinn. Mm. Did you see the jack? Did you see the? I, it's a it. Harley Quinn. Yes. It's a Harlequin pattern. Yes, precisely. Yes. The eyes mm-hmm. in the water. I like yeah. it. Yeah. I think it's good. Bit of fun. Yeah. It is a bit of fun. Yeah. Do you think she's going to do the voice? <laughs> like that one. You yeah, know? maybe. Yeah. Mm. Well, she's. I imagine she's got a. I don't know if I've ever heard Lady Gaga speak. No? You haven't seen any of her movies that she's in? House of Gucci? I have seen House of Gucci. But there you go. Yes, that's true. <laughs> that's how she talks. But like a okay, right? <laughs> you haven't I imagine seen she's A got Star a, is Born? I have not seen A Star is Born, no. Yeah. But I imagine she's got a kind of New New York accent. I imagine she's she's running that. She's, she's, she is an Italian-American I'm of some no, sort. I mean, I've definitely heard she's her She's one talk. of those Italian-Americans. She sounds normal, and okay. I don't even know what that means. Okay, but right. I, I don't remember being like, I think she's going to use a normal accent. Okay, well, then normal it is. Anyway, I like the look. Uh, I, I, you know, I Let's see where this is going, I guess, aesthetically. Well, she's mm. coming out of a courthouse or something. Maybe she's done some big crimes with Maybe the Joker. She's done a big crime, yeah. No doubt. But uh, are you looking forward to Joker 2, second yes, Joker? Yes, All I right. Because you love the first one. But you are looking forward to this one. Yes. Because you love no. this one. <laughs> Sorry. I've put those are the two things together and I don't know if that's accurate. Mason, remember how we were talking about Zack Snyder's doing a big reveal? Yes. What was there's the big a, reveal? There's an announcement oh, yeah. related to, the, to his DCEU. Mm-hmm. 
and was the trilogy it a, that he made. Was it a um, screening? Yes, yeah, a screening. Terrific. I know we talked about this a little last week, but it was fully locked in and confirmed Nice that he's doing a special screening of his version of Justice League and Man of Steel and Batman v Superman in that order. And oh, about, in reverse order. Yeah, reverse order. Interesting. And it's going to be a... And he's a, like, it's a new timeline. <laughs> this is canon now. <laughs> they run backwards. <laughs> it says a... That makes... Superman and Batman even more enemies now. Does it? And everybody's like, yeah, that's grim. <laughs> that's so grim. It is a bit grim, isn't mm. it? Uh, they, it at, so they start out as friends in the Justice League and then they become enemies through a reverse fight. So Superman is alive yep. and then he dies yep. because the Flash kills him with an electric box. Yep. And then Doomsday brings him back to life. That's right. Okay. And then he becomes Batman's worst enemy by do, by by fixing his car <laughs> and fixing his armor, which Batman doesn't like. Keep your hands off my stuff, man. That's for Jeremy Irons. That's right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There we go. Now, he was asked about a follow-up comic as well, and he said that's not happening as of now, though it had been discussed in the past. But he's just focusing on, like, Rebel Moon, and also Rebel Moon is getting its own, like, comic and animated spin-off something and, mm. and whatever. So okay. if you're a Zack Snyder DC fan, mm-hmm. this is okay news, I guess. Okay news. But if you're a Rebel Moon fan, that's big news. Well, big news also for Rebel Moon. I believe he said something along the lines of, yeah, every Rebel Moon movie is going to get uh, it's going to get the regular release, but it's also going to get a super cool R-rated release. Oh my god! You know on Netflix? Yeah. Wait, what do you, What do you mean? <laughs> just watch is it not, the. Is it going watch, to cinemas at all? Maybe I don't mm. think there's been any official announcement about that though. Because Apple of, Apple announced that they're moving into movies specifically Ooh. to like build their brand of like we make high quality movies and then you can mm. only watch those high quality movies on your Apple Watch or whatever. Sure, sure, sure. And I think Netflix yeah. need to do a similar thing. Whereas mm. the, we're like they did with Knives Out too, but properly. Yes. Like release it for like a month mm. and then you can only see this on your Apple Watch yeah, or, th- or your I, Netflix watch. I hope that is the way the winds are blowing because you need both, right? Creed 3 is going to video on demand very soon and yeah. it's doing really well. Yeah. At the cinemas. So it's bizarre. Yeah. But I think that might be a result of this next month being like John Wick and mm, yeah, Super yeah. Mario and Dungeons and Dragons, and there's a bunch of other stuff coming where they realize that the return on that is mm. I assume it's calculated. But but if you look at like Puss in Boots. <laughs> we assume a lot of things about the movie business we, and that they're all big smart guys, <laughs> and perhaps they are not big smart yeah. guys. Perhaps they are dumb guys Maybe like us. Maybe they are. But I think like if perhaps you look, they were once smart guys like us and then their brains have dissolved. Oh, that's possible. Mm. But if you look at, like, Puss in Boots, it's really the only kids' movie that anybody wants to see. It's on streaming, but it's still in cinemas. It still makes, like, a million bucks a week yeah, right. just from sitting there doing nothing. It's true. That will change when Mario comes out again. But... That is true. Oh, and speaking of Dungeons & Dragons, I mentioned this to you mm. uh, off this air. This is a third or fourth bit of news, Mason. Maybe it is. My goodness. <laughs> it feels good. We're going to talk about that next I'm week. I'm on holiday, so I have time to think about bits of news. Wow. But I only mentioned, I mentioned this to you. Um, Does that mean I can do less news? I wouldn't risk it. Because you're picking up the slack. No, I I certainly wouldn't risk it. It just seems fair. (laughs) You know, if I did do less work. Yeah. Anyway, go on. Uh, There's there's been a final trailer for Dungeons & Dragons. Yeah. uh, And they've gone the same strategy that they did for the last time that Chris Pine was involved in a reboot, uh, Star Trek. A big nerd property. A big nerd property, which is... They've, you know, a bunch of us, inclu- a bunch of media types, including us, yep. uh, got to see an advanced screening of this movie. That wasn't a media paid. thing. We just went. Yeah, we just paid. We paid money. We went with general audiences. But the final trailer, the, dregs. the final trailer is a lot of uh, uh, critic reviews saying, that's right, you thought this was for nerds, but it's actually for regular people. It's for you. It's actually good. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about that? <laughs> <laughs> they, if it does well. One of the reviews said it's the most Chris Pine role that Chris Pine's ever done or something. Wow. I'm that's like, saying something. Doesn't make any sense. Mason Variety is the spice of life. And oh, also this so publication. True. Listeners, that's a little thing you can take with you. That's right. You know? Tell everyone you know. Mm. But uh, someone was fired from Star Wars. I don't know if you heard this again. I did hear that, yeah. Yeah, so Damon Lynch. <laughs> but for real this time. Wait. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I was thinking about Kathleen Kennedy who get, keeps getting fake fired. I think she will leave soon. Okay. But, uh, but no, not yet. <laughs> if I were Kathleen Kennedy, I would leave on my own after however 10 years, 15 Plus, years. Plus, yeah, 11 years. Millions of just untold millions of dollars in like salary and bonuses yep. and what have you. Just as a little treat for the fans, I would do a press conference and I'd be all teary and I'd be like, I'll be fired. <laughs> I'll be fired from Star Wars. <laughs> I'll be, I'll I, be did too, I did too many feminisms when they fired me. 
Kevin Feige's going to take over. Yeah, with, yeah. Dave, with Dave Filoni. <laughs> Dave Filoni and John Favreau, they're doing all the stuff you want. I made all the stuff you didn't like. <laughs> They'd be like, just kidding, suck it, nerds. <laughs> Uh, or maybe I'd leave it. Maybe I'd just be like, I'm so sad I got fired. And then <laughs> and just then give, like, leave the nerd, give the nerds a win, you know? Yeah, absolutely. They've been putting in the work. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Anyway, someone was fired because this always happens. <laughs> uh-huh. This is this is a disaster though. The, the amount of people that they are churning through. Yeah. What's this, like 12 properties now maybe? So Damon Lindelof. Uh, who lost Damon Lindelof. Lost uh, New Watchmen series, mm. um, the, the one of uh, the leftovers, mm. all of that. Uh, he was writing a Star Wars movie, but he's been uh, replaced and with Stephen Knight, who is one of the writers and workers on of Peaky Blinders, a show oh. that I have never seen. I've seen some of it. Great. Pretty and good, right? I don't Pretty know. Good. Is yeah. it? Yeah, it's all right. <laughs> I, I heard yeah. it's good. Yeah. Yeah. Killian Murphy. He's in it. Others. Others are in it. See, I yeah, 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 yeah. I always see him with his little flat cap. That's his Peaky. Oh. Where's his blinders? It's a little razy you keep in the in the hat. Wow, does yeah. he do it? Not when I not when I was watching it. That's crazy, man. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, someone else was fired. Uh, go on. Uh, this is so. This isn't Stephen S. Knight, who's a different. That's guy. a different Stephen. It's a different nice. guy. That's what I thought. Yeah, because it's a different name and man. Mm, yeah, but I could see how you'd make that. Yeah, comparison. Mm. Uh, some, he's in Hollywood. I know that. He's in much. Hollywood. That's all you need to know. Someone was else was fired from Marvel. So oh. Marvel Studio President. Of uh, physical and post production, VFX and animation production, Victoria Alonso. Now she's been at Marvel since 2006 and has overseen all of those things. Mm. Uh, VFX being one of the bigger ones, especially of late, because they've got 120 properties a year. Well, yeah. they did until recently. And they're churning through that. Like, speaking of churn, and they're churning through all churning those through. VFX companies, just being like, do it faster, do it quicker, do it. Cheaper, and they're like... Make it look worse. Make it look worse, and they're like, we're trying. We're making it as bad as we can. <laughs> and they're like, well, it could be worse, so you're fired and we'll move on to this. Less time. Mm, yeah, Put yeah. less time into this. That's right. So, yeah, she's been at Marvel since Iron Man, uh, since 2006, mm. and obviously came over with, you know, she was part of the Disney acquisition and all of that, which happened in 2010, I want to say. Mm-hmm. I can't remember. But anyway... There's a number of rumours regards to what happened here. Mm. And there was one that was saying she was a tyrant with VFX companies and she played favourites and if she didn't like you, she was out and you were out and whatever. If she didn't like you, she was out. She was like, I'm <laughs> going to remove myself from this okay. situation. Terrific. Uh, but there's other people saying, no, that's not actually true and she's kind of being used as a scapegoat for, for you know, by higher-ups at yeah. Disney and Marvel. I mean, we you know, we know from Reddit, the most reputable source on the internet. We know Reddit. And various other sources that, yes, the, the VFX situation at Marvel has been very bad. So I guess the question Dire. is, is it a case of like the fish rots from the head and, it, and she's been, yeah. you know, she she's like keep it quicker and, and worse and what have you <laughs> and all her underlings have been, you know, telling people, you know, yeah. cracking the whip and telling everybody to, to do that. Or is it a case of Feige's like, well, this, the, the secret's out that, you know, all the VFX companies are being treated poorly. We've got to get rid of somebody mm. and then we say, well, we found out and we made a cho- and we made a call and now everything's going to be great again. Well, that apparently wasn't it. And mm. also, like, if she's working with VFX, she's not greenlighting everything. That's true. So her role is to make sure it gets done. That's like true. She, she didn't say, I want 120 hours of Marvel this year or whatever. Right. I assume. Yeah. Anyway, Kevin Feige. He's not a true fan, she says. Yes, that's I right. I want what the fans <laughs> want. Kevin Feige uh, apparently, yeah, wasn't involved in any of this. Nice. Apparently. Nice. The deadline have said that this is actually a result of a breach of contract because she has an exclusive. Uh, her work is supposed to be exclusive. Oh, and she was Marvel. working on something else. It's called Argentina 1985, and she was allowed as part of a contract to work on it, but not to promote it. Ah, and apparently, okay. she did a few interviews. Right, and and because also apparently she she uh, took a hard stance against Disney, not really saying much on Florida's "Don't Say Gay" bill. That maybe had something to do with it because apparently that film deals with a lot of those kind of issues and so okay. she felt very passionally about it. This is when her statement and um, regards the termination and how it's unlawful and there's talk of maybe suing and whatever and Disney came out and said, well, that's not the full story but we wish her all the best and thanks for all your work, so, so. etc. Mm. So it's a mess. It seems like a mess. Uh, so there you go. That's something okay. that happened. And we, It's a mess and we've untangled it. Thank God. It's good, isn't it? <laughs> yep. 
Just a couple of boys 3,000 miles away. Just, just getting it done. Just getting it done, sorting it out. It's very clear now. <laughs> All the answers have been revealed. Yep. You can see, you can all sleep at night now. Thank goodness. Yeah, and VFX, the, don't worry, folks, Marvel movies are going to be darker than ever, like physically darker. <laughs> you won't be able to see a goddamn thing. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we want, right? That's what. Because oh. then you can imagine whatever you want. Well, let's talk about a dark Marvel property, Mason. Ooh. This is by the Hot Mike podcast. Oh yeah, this is with Jeff Snyder. It's me, a Hot Mike. <laughs> what do you think of these abs? <laughs> oh no, uh, he's I'm physically hot. I thought. Oh, it's like, like a he's hot... running a temperature. He's got a one of those. I've got a fever. He's got a therm- He's got a thermometer in his mouth, and he's got one of those big bags of ice on his head, and he's always like, oh. <laughs> I've got the best Hollywood news, oh, <laughs> but I can't get out of bed, oh. Anyway, so this is Jeff Snyder and John Broker. And what's Hot Mike have to say? Uh, Hot Mike says they cut Kit Harrington's Eternals character out of Blade pretty much. Oh, entirely? Maybe not entirely. So there was no mostly. point for me to watch Eternals at all. Well, you know, he had fun. No, I didn't. But you saw it. That's undeniable, yes, that is true. <laughs> so You've got me. You've trapped me in an impenetrable web of logic there. Black Knight's not really involved in the Blade thing anymore. Apparently Disappointing. The, the script is leaner and meaner and they just cut a bunch of the fat. Uh, but apparently it's quite a short film at the moment, like the screenplay is like 90 minutes or whatever, which is fine with me. Okay. Because sometimes 90 minutes is better than longer minutes sometimes. So true. Usually but not always. We'll talk about one bit later, Mason. Oh, uh, another bit of news. Okay. This is also by Jeff Snyder. This is in regards to the Indiana Jones spin-off series that was happening. It's being shelved. Okay. Uh, it was going to be a prequel. Is this is Phoebe Waller Bridge involved somehow? No. Oh no, it's the guy. It's the Abner guy. Abner Raven. It's the guy. Okay, right. It's the that guy, guy tutored and mentored Indiana yeah, Jones. Right, right. And it probably has a hat. No doubt he has a hat. Yeah, because the men of that era would have a hat. A hat with a little propeller on it. Oh, you think so? That's what men with the the era. Because he's on the geek squad or whatever? (laughs) Yeah, he's one of the little rascals. (laughs) He goes to all the ancient temples and he fixes all their traps. Oh, that's cool. They call him out and they're like, oh, the the poison dart machine isn't working, can you? (laughs) He's like, have you tried turning it off and on again? (laughs) (laughs) Just step on the thing a bunch of just click, 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 and it'll work. five clicks and then it'll be fine. it should be fine. Yeah. So it was going to be a prequel to 1981's Raiders of the Lost Ark because Raiders of the Lost Ark. Mm-hmm, go on. Well, that's that's actually – that's not the first Indiana Jones move anyway, chronologically. Mm-hmm. The first movie is Temple of Doom, I'm just saying, Mason. So this is also a prequel to, to Temple of Doom. Exactly. Wow, wow, And wow. it focuses on Indy's unseen mentor, Abner Ravenwood. I guess that's Marion's father? Yes. It? Yeah, okay, there that's we right. go. An Egyptologist and archaeologist who is dead by the time of the first film's events in 1936. Wow. Uh, so apparently this is a result – he's useless. Yeah. He's like, oh, t- this week I'm going I'm to find the Ark of the Covenant. Oh, I can't find it. I didn't. I hope somebody does. I hope someone's not, I'd love to see that. But this I'll week, Holy won't. Grail. Oh, I hope someone. Oh, holy bloody Grail. Hell. Jeez, this is tough actually. Man. I'm this just should, down the pub. I should call it the Holy Snail because it's bloody taken me so long to find this thing. I don't think I will actually. <laughs> just call me the Holy Snail. <laughs> I'm going to the pub. <laughs> He's really good at improv, just like me. Oh, wow, that's so really good. Yeah. His feet. yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, apparently this is because they want to focus more on Star Wars, uh-huh. which is not a surprise. And this is also off the back of apparently Willow not being uh, well received or didn't rate well and probably cancelled well, yeah. maybe. Mm-hmm. Though uh, maybe not. Like some of the people involved are like, well, we've been let go from our contracts, but it doesn't mean it's all over and whatever. I'm going to say something about the show Willow. As someone who doesn't give a fuck about Willow mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. never has, I recently rewatched it to watch the series and I'm like, it was fine. But I watched the series. Uh-huh, uh-huh. It's, I thought it was pretty good. Right. And as someone, it was like a whimsical kind of mm. kid-friendly-ish fantasy world. And I, like, I liked the new characters. And that's on Netflix. Disney Plus. Disney Plus. Can you also get original? Did you also watch I original? I watched original Willow. On yeah. Disney Plus? Yes. Okay, great. And I honestly, also bearing in mind, zero expectation. Mm. Do not care about Willow. But I, I, I liked uh, most, if not all, of the new characters from memory. And when it ended, I went, I'd see more Willow. But now I can't. Anyways, maybe this is also because they realised that they could do something with short round. And oh, maybe, hey, sure, yeah. Okay, hey, right. we have someone, don't we have someone who's not a thousand years old from an Indiana Jones movie mm. we, could, we could put in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A beloved actor. And, but who? And doesn't this mean we can set it close to contemporary times and yeah. we, we can spend less on, uh, less on costuming? And, well, and, let me think. Temple of Doom was, what, 35? Yeah. And short oh, round, yeah, that's a good short point. round was 10. The 60s? Yeah, so 60s, 70s. I guess you could set it whenever the newer one is, mm. whenever that is. Yeah, yeah. Or you could have them fall into a time portal and reemerge in the 90s. Wow. Yeah, that's right. That's when uh, the Indiana Jones Chronicles took place. 
With precisely, the Indiana Jones. Precisely. With he could watch, he could watch it on the television. <laughs> yeah. Go, well, I don't remember any of that. That's cheap. That is cheap. <laughs> Hey, it's me, Short Round, and let's all watch the Young Indiana Jones Chronicles. Would you like an Indiana Jones movie set in the 90s? I mean, you couldn't really because, like, they'd all be dead by then, presumably. Yeah, because Indy could wear his inline skates. He could. Yeah. Because <laughs> could... there'll be one where he'd be like, you'll never get me on those rollerblades. Cut two is on the rollerblades. <laughs> it's being chased by Nazis is on the rollerblades. I love that. Yeah. Great stuff. You'll never get me in a hypercolor T-shirt. <laughs> well, I think you'll... I think you'll change your mind. You've been swimming through the sewers of Venice. What are you going to – you've got to put on a fresh hypercolor T-shirt. Isn't you? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. No, Jonathan Reese davies I won't wear a, a slap band of friendship with you. <laughs> he's alive too? Yep. Well, he's in sliders. Yeah. That was in the 90s, yeah. Now on this next bit of news, oh. an expanded look at Shazam and relation to Black Adam and all of those things. This segment is too long. Just want to point that out. <laughs> Terrific. Just right now. So settle in, folks, or <laughs> skip. Or well, skip. That's fine. Or don't settle and just be aggravated the entire time. <laughs> just be like, God, this has gone forever. Oh, I can't reach my phone. Uh, <laughs> I'm in a very perilous situation right now. <laughs> I'm being chased by Nazis and I'm on rollerblades. <laughs> so I just want to be clear, before all of this happened, the DC film Slate and Universe is, was already spiralling. Mm-hmm. This is before Black Adam and yeah. Shazam. Like, not good. So they had some success with like what are now called Elseworld stories with the Joker and the Batman. They mm-hmm. did quite well. But between like the Snyderverse collapsing and then bringing it back and then collapsing it in on itself again mm-hmm. and then all, most of their mainline movies either underperformed critically or commercially or both. Mm-hmm. Or they're currently underperforming. Oh, they're currently example, underperforming. the movie Shazam, Fury of the Gods, which I, has, I believe has had some sort of second week 80% drop off, something like that. It was something big but – it wasn't as big as I think like something like Ant-Man 3 was because it didn't have a big enough opening initially oh, no. <laughs> to to warrant a, okay. a huge second week drop right. off. So depending on how you structure that sentence, yeah. it's it, you could make it sound better or worse. That's right. Mm. But it sounds worse. It's, it's not good in yeah. all all in all, yeah. Anyway, so but the rock has been recently villainized and his involvement has been added to this kind of poor list of like list of poor decisions that have been made. <laughs> uh over the last, let's say, nine years maybe? Okay, well, all right. Yeah. Anyway, this is via The Wrap. Apparently Dwayne The Rock Johnson, who's behind the scenes manoeuvring to boost another DC property, Black Adam, in which he starred, may well end up tanking Black Adam and Shazam. This was obviously written before because it, it, it is tanking. It's happening. It's absolutely It's tanking. currently happening. Otherwise the, the, um, the, the, the phrasing would be different there. That's right, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So Shazam has also kind of had a bad run with cameos because – Remember Headless Superman in the first Shazam? I do. That, that was supposed to be Henry Cavill. That mm. was shot with a stand-in. Spoiler alert for Shazam 2, which nearly happened with Gal Gadot as, as well. Like they weren't sure whether it was going to happen initially because they shot it with a body double and all of that, but luckily it, it did come together. But apparently that, the higher-ups then at DC were like, no, you can't use Henry Cavill. Like he's not Superman currently I say, right. anymore. Yeah, right. He's, mm-hmm. he's, he's pretty much out. Uh-huh, yeah. But that's, of course, until he came back in very briefly. But you can use our other character, Headless Superman. <laughs> he's, he's spraying Kryptonian blood just absolutely everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Bring a mop. But he's very popular. That's right. <laughs> he's our most popular character, mm-hmm. which could be true. So then... What was supposed to happen with Shazam 2, that there was going to be a justice... It was supposed to be successful. Well, that was part of it. That mm. was definitely part make of it. Make tons of money. Yeah, make like all the money. In its theatrical run, yeah, 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 it would yeah. have made much more money than it is. Well, it this has. has made more money than Avatar 2. <laughs> this is what we wanted, they said. <laughs> this is great. Mm. But the Justice Society, a couple of members were supposed to cameo. Remember the post credit scene where we get some characters from Peacemaker? Mm-hmm. It was going to be Hawkman and... One of the others. Sure. Who's, who's not Dr. Fate. Okay, sure. Cyclone maybe? Maybe Cyclone. But, yeah, I'm pretty sure those were the two. So they even built this abandoned gas station, uh-huh. like outside set situation. That's canny because I would have got a regular gas station and waited for it to be abandoned. How long would you wait, I guess? Years probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> You'd think ahead though, wouldn't you? You'd yeah. already know. That's true. Yeah, I would you would have bought it years ago. Yeah, at the start of the DCEU, you would have. That's right, <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's thinking ahead. So three days before filming, 
that all fell apart. Oh, no. Mysteriously. It's not mysterious. We'll talk about it more. Oh, I thought it was so, mysterious. No, it wasn't. So Peter Safran, who's the producer on this and, of course, is heading up the DCU now with James Gunn, he wrangled Jennifer Holland and Steve Agee at the last minute. Get in there. <laughs> Watcha. Watcha. You're being wrangled. And you might be fired. I don't know yet. <laughs> I don't know what's happening just yet. So we talked about this last week in our review, but – there, there's been complaints of like, well, James Gunn is just putting his wife in everything. This is before that. This was filmed like a year ago. That's right. They she need- did it behind his back. <laughs> a massive betrayal. Yeah. They needed some people mm. to stand in that That's abandoned right. service station That's or whatever. Right. This yeah, is yeah. what they got. I didn't mind it. I thought it was fine and I liked those characters. Mm. But again, it is a bit of a disconnect because they, they're like, we need to recruit you for the Justice Society as opposed to Task Force X or yeah. Suicide Squad or what have you. We need to recruit you for a whatever another movie is. Yeah, that's whatever right. that ends up being. We we need you to be in it or around mm, it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh so what apparently happened was that The Rock denied access and David uh to these characters because he was a producer and a large creative force both figuratively and literally oh, on my Black goodness, Adam. Yes. Um and David F Sandberg had to make the last minute decision to change it to those two characters. Now Apparently the idea was, and we've heard about this before, that Dwayne The Rock Johnson, he attempted to restructure the entire DCEU, unofficial name, it never had a name. That's right. uh, Which would centre, and we've talked about this again, specifically around himself as Black Adam Mm. and Henry Cavill as Superman. That's right. Two dynamic characters who (laughs) famously are always doing things together, aren't they, Mason? That's right. Action Comics number one, (laughs) Superman versus Black Adam. We've been waiting a hundred years for it. And as we talked about at the time, mm-hmm. it's not a good pairing. Yeah. Who cares if this guy fights this other guy? Batman versus Superman, that's an interesting idea. Mm-hmm. Batman versus anybody, just anybody. Superman versus anybody is more interesting than this, I feel. Mm. Superman and Shazam is more interesting than Superman and Black Adam, yes. I feel. But, but of the, course, anything can be interesting. Mm, but, but evidently somebody told The Rock at some point, you know, since Black Adam is magic and Superman is vulnerable to magic. Yeah. He'll probably beat Superman. And he went, good. I'm going to base my entire life around this for several years. Do you remember you also read an article at the I time? I can't remember. No, you did when we talked yeah. about Black Adam and how The Rock had a series of social media posts over the decade naming different DC characters and how they could beat Superman, like implying that he was going to be, I think one of them was one of the, a Green Lantern and yeah, there were some right, other ones okay, kind sure, of sure. scattered through in there and he uh-huh. eventually settled again on Black Adam because mm, he was sure, casting right. like 1993 yeah, <laughs> or whatever. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, so apparently Zachary Levi was apparently not allowed at the behest of The Rock to cameo in the post credit scene in Black Adam. Wow. So it was Superman when it would make more sense, I guess, to, to not be Superman. Yeah. Mm. I mean, I think probably going forward the number one thing that uh, the heads of DC are going to do is not let a star <laughs> become a producer on the level that they can just say, you can't use your own characters in another movie. Yeah. That's that's staggering. Absolutely it is. Especially since Black Adam did really badly. Yes. But now, but he still retains this power. I think that's really interesting. It seems that way. You know yeah. what the claw should be? It should be, yeah, you get to retain control of these characters if your movie does well. Yeah. And if it does poorly, we kick you in a pit. <laughs> But that have to get somebody bigger, obviously. But it could yeah, be, yeah. it could be done. It, I guess. But I also they get I, that guy from Game of Thrones, man. Yeah, get the big guy from Game of Thrones. One of the several big guys mm. in Game of Thrones. That's right. But I think all together, all three of them, <laughs> just bum rush the rock. <laughs> but I think also stop DJing or whatever your regular job is and come here and <laughs> throw the rock into a pit. <laughs> but I think also all of this was filmed and settled upon before, like Black Adam even came out. Yeah. So they didn't know. Shazam was supposed to come out in December, Shazam uh-huh. 2. So it was already a lock like months right, yeah, before yeah. then. So, yeah. Now, all of these rumours, right, that I've mm. kind of put together here. And to be clear, they are rumours. Most of them have been confirmed. Oh, no. Uh, I was going to say we don't want The Rock finding us and beating us up. No. <laughs> By Zachary Levi himself. Oh, yeah, that's right. Who's posted on Instagram, the truth shall set you free under most of that information with an upside-down smiley face and this two-hand emoji. And it sounds very profound unless you hear it in his Shazam voice. The truth will set you free. He's got to set you free. I'm a boy. Can you believe it? <laughs> this just happened. Um, 
he, he was also asked if he'd seen Black Adam in another interview and he's like, well, I haven't had time to see Black Adam as of yet. Mm. Um, I'm too busy posting on social media, <laughs> front-facing camera footage. But Zachary Levi's also talked about how, you know, he's obviously worked with Peter Safran and he reckons he's got a lot of great business sense and he's a big fan of James Gunn as a visionary creative and he can't wait to see what they have in store because I'm excited for that. And please give me another job. And please job. give me another job, et cetera, and so forth. David F. Sandberg, also the director of Shazam's, to Shazam's Mason, he spoke to THR and he said, the thing about Black Adam is that he has the same powers as Shazam. This is about using him in the sequel mm-hmm. because it would make more sense if you put Shazam and Black Adam in some kind of movie situation together. Because they are related in some way, perhaps due to their origins <laughs> of magic and so forth. Being the same. The same, <laughs> same stuff. Yeah, the same stuff. But he said... This is the same stuff that you have. <laughs> is it lightning? You did lightning just now? Yes. Wow. And we, But we did that kind of thing with the first movie with Savannah, you know, the same power situation. Mm-hmm, sure. So I don't think the fight itself would have been super interesting, but I do think it was a missed opportunity. What makes most sense is to have them fight each other. So that's money left on the table, but it is how it is. And I agree. I think you, you really needed to structure this universe. Mm-hmm. You kind of, you wall off this Shazam Black Adam universe in its own thing. And if it does well and people love it, then you have it, then you have a, the meet people at a petrol station and whatever. Then you go from there. Well, hindsight is twenty twenty, isn't it, James? It certainly it's is. It's all very well for you to be like, well, what they should have done, well, too bad. You should have spoken up when you had the chance. And look, I also, I don't think any of this necessarily is the reason why Shazam 2 is bombing. Mm. Like having the Justice Society cameo at the end yes. isn't the reason people That's not turning going, people away, no. no. I don't think so. They were turned away well before. <laughs> That's right. And I think it's it's not even. I don't think it's even the DCU's fault in it, or the DCEU, n- never named officially. Yeah. I don't think it's even like the fault of the quality of DC movies. I think it's how people have responded to. I think probably superhero movies in general since the and start of the year, especially and mediocre, ones, mediocre ones. Which we've been getting, yeah. you know, and we've we've had we've had Black Adam. Yep. We've had. Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, which people didn't seem to love either. Yeah. And I think for a lot of people, for a general audience who don't care about necessarily overarching continuity and and, and that sort of thing, yeah. they just want to go and see an entertaining movie. Mm. The the brand of superhero movies has been tarnished a bit. Yeah. And uh, and they've seen a couple of bad ones and they're like, well, I'm not going to risk it again. Mm. And also we're, we, we're, we're in a – James, we're in a new golden age of cinema <laughs> where you're seeing a Top Gun Maverick. Yeah, exactly. You're seeing it and you're literally seeing it because it isn't so dark you can't see what's going on. And you on. go, wow, movies are real, you say to movies yourself. Movies are real again. And Tom you know? Cruise turns to you, the audience, and goes, movies are real. That's yeah. right, I can hear you because movies are real. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> they put microphones in every cinema <laughs> in the world because of me and I respond to one person a day <laughs> and they'll never believe you. <laughs> I think, again, though, and we talked about this last week, like the reason it probably bombed is I think there was too much of a gap between this and the first one. Mm -hmm. I also think Zachary Levi is not like a Ben Affleck or a Henry Cavill or a Ryan Reynolds. He's not like a big social media kind of brand in himself. Mm -hmm. Sure, sure. You know? And that's not to say that, again, that, you know, he's, he's not good as Shazam, even though there's that weird disconnect between him and the boy. You know, he's fun. He does fun things. But I also think... It was marketed poorly because we get a lot of comments that were just like, I didn't know this was out. Yeah. You know? Unless you see the bus that happens to have the, the poster on <laughs> yeah. it drive by. <laughs> Which it might. Might. Or it might not. Might not. Yeah. I also think it's this whole situation, I don't even think it's like, I don't even blame The Rock for trying to come in and take over and, and kind of insert his own mm. self and character into this because this whole fucking thing was floundering. There was a door here for him to step That's through. That's true, and they, you're right. And they, yeah. they allowed it to happen and he took a shot at it. And we've talked about in the past, you know, the Marvel Cinematic Universe mm. was initially created with what people at the time would consider B-listers or worse. Yeah. You know, because all the, what you would call all the Just big... Just yuckos. The, all the biggest selling the best stuff, Spider-Man, the X-Men and so forth, had yep. been licensed out to other people and so... Uh, Marvel Studios had essentially the leftovers and they made that into some, you know, sometimes you'll say, well, Iron Man used to be kind of a B-lister and people will be like, no, he wasn't. He's always been cool. And it's like, Do you remember when he had roller skates? (laughs) Yes. Do you remember that? I do. Yeah. Um, But And so, you know, the idea that 
Black Adam would become the central figure of this. It's not that far-fetched when you think about it. He's a Superman-like figure, yeah. and The Rock has a lot of charisma. Yeah. And, and you you know, you could build the universe around that. Why not? It's just uh, yeah. it didn't work, and it didn't work real bad. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Anyway, Shazam 2 is streaming uh, apparently on April 18th, so, huh. you know, that's always a good sign as well when they're like, okay, we'll just – Give it a month. Yeah. <laughs> Put it on maybe people will be more inclined to watch this if they don't have to leave their homes and they can be on their phones. Yeah, maybe. They can watch Zachary Levi's Instagram stories <laughs> while they watch the movie. <laughs> maybe that's the spice it needs. It might just be. Maybe they can uh, uh, Maybe they can play Black Adam on their phones and they can hold up the Justice Society. Oh, next in, to it. Next to the gas station scene and pretend oh, yeah. that they're there. That's fun, isn't That'll it? That'll do it. Maybe maybe there'll be a huge maybe there'll be a surge <laughs> in purchase of Shazam too when people find out that little life hack. And Black Adam, mm. you purchase them both. Yeah. Side by side. Oh, two winners. Yeah. So there you go. That's just a little bit of Hollywood goss. Mm-hmm. Just actors out in the world just taking shots at each other. That's right. And that's what we love to see. Mm-hmm. John- Jonathan Wickleton, he's back <laughs> in uh Chapter chapter four. That's right. John Wick chapter four. Uh, this had a budget. You're not going to believe this, Mason. Guess the budget. I reckon more than the previous ones. Significantly That's more. You're on the right I'm track. I'm going to say $120 million. You, it's 100 Okay. All so right. Can you believe that? I can believe it. So when I said you're not going to believe it, you do believe it. I do, yeah. <sighs> yeah, yeah. Damn. And what's that say about you? I don't know. It's not good, though. No. So this is <laughs> makes interesting. Makes you a bad person, I think. <laughs> so <laughs> I think we can all agree that makes you a bad person. I think, I think For making I'm... assumptions, honestly. <laughs> we can no, all... We're correct, obviously, but it's not the point, the yeah. fact that you made them at all. I appreciate that. Mm. Uh, the box office return in the opening weekend in the US alone is $70 million, which is also incredible for an R-rated movie. I don't know about your screening that you went to. Mine uh, was pretty full. I and it went, was like during yeah. the day on like a Thursday. Yeah, I went Saturday daytime. Mm-hmm. Pretty full, mm. pretty full. But I think word of mouth on this one is probably going to... I agree. But this is interesting because you look at the numbers here mm-hmm. in terms of how they budgeted these, and this is how you slowly build a franchise. Because John Wick Chapter 1, which mm-hmm. was just called John Wick 1. Yeah, that's that right. had a budget. John Wick 1 <laughs> brackets, we know there's going to be sequels. <laughs> but it was going to nearly go to video on demand. Yeah. Right? It was gonna nearly going to be a direct-to-DVD, well, at the time probably direct-to-DVD mm. movie. Keanu Reeves notwithstanding, it was just like... Mm, exactly, yeah. 2014, whenever it was. That was a $20 million film. Yeah. The second one was a $40 million film. The third one was a $75 million film. Nah, they should have made it 80. Because <laughs> then it would have been perfectly 20, 20, even. 20, yeah. They should have spent an extra $5 million. Just to make just, you happy. <laughs> just to make me happy. God, duh. So I just think this is a fascinating kind of and really clever way to build a friend. This is how this is yeah. the, the blueprint which yeah, yeah. a lot of people seem to miss. And look, and I you know, I've talked about in the past, but I'm sure we both have and plenty of people have that this this series has had sort of a fast and furious style escalation in this, in the so far as the first one is pretty standard. He gets beat up by like two dudes in his apartment. Yeah, like it's pre- <laughs> it's pretty kind of regular you know, it's interesting and the, and you know, it's got Keanu Reeves, it's got a great supporting cast. Yeah. And but it's it's him versus kind of regular sort of organized crime gang guys stuff like that and then the the se- you know the sequel to that and then the subsequent ones have had this massive escalation into this kind of spectacular kind of theatrical world of there's always super a, assassins. a better coin to get i have and i have higher some, up I, have some, I have some questions about the logistics of the world of assassins which we'll leave to later i think but okay. but all, and, and you know and and some people have said oh okay that's all a bit silly or, you know, maybe it should have stayed at the ground level. I kind of feel like without the theatrics, it probably wouldn't have made it to four. I agree. You know? not, and not well, I think. Mm, yeah. I think these increased budgets and making everything kind of more dynamic and interesting. And it just, mm-hmm. they just, they look great and they look kind of better as they mm. go. And the settings of the fight scenes, you know, really make a difference. What do you think the story was though? Oh. God, it took me a minute to catch up at the start of this. I'm like, what's okay? Who's this? What's <laughs> well, this? what happened to the? Well, all you'd have to do is watch John Wick two, because then you'd know where John Wick four starts, mm. which is where John Wick three ended. We didn't love three, did we? From no, the I don't. Know. I thought it was okay. Look, I don't know if okay. Um, how okay? So look, what the story is is John Wick's John Wick's on the run from the table, which is the big organized crime guys, and they're like, they're, it's they're, a literal this, table. It's this, come to life. That's right. It's a magical table. The this the. Wonderful organization of super assassins. They've got to kill him because he wants out, and they're like, "Well, you can't, can't just let you leave. We'll just send hundreds of guys at you, yep. and you can ruin all their lives." Yep, and there'll um, be no consequences for that because yeah. they don't know anybody that will miss them. But there's that table that's going to get you. That's right. Yeah. 
Um, I could fold that into a slightly bigger table. <laughs> you know those ones? You open yeah. up in the middle. Um, anyway, that's it. He's got to. He's got to kill everybody. Yeah. He's got to kill everybody to get out. And and but there's no way out. But is there? Maybe you got to do a thing. Maybe you got to do a thing. Um, maybe you have to cut off another finger or whatever. You got to cut off all your fingers. <laughs> um, but yeah, we. I mean, I was certainly critical of three for two reasons. One of which was it never really changed the status quo no. of the previous movie. John Wick was on the run at the end of the second one and then just some stuff happens and at the end he's just on the run again and none, none of the characters really evolved. We didn't no. learn anything. There's some great action in yeah. it, but well, I agree. But yeah. I was going to say, and the second thing I'm critical, I was critical of is I kind of thought even though the action was good, I thought it got quite samey. I agree. Towards the end, I think there was a lot of – there was an ex- because both – uh, Keanu Reeves and Halle Berry's characters had attack dogs. Mm. So much of it was just like attack dog and then two bullets to the head. Yeah. Like it was just that for two-ish hours. Um, and I don't know if what, – what's the what's the director's name? Uh, Chad. Um, it's Chad Stahelski. Yeah. I don't know if he he felt the same. I don't know if he listened to critics. I don't know if our, our – I think most people generally like them. Yeah, I, I, don't know if, I don't know if our opinion was common or what have you or even if he just went, you know what, I'm going to mix it up. Yeah. And he does in this and I think it's this great. This is – Really good. Yeah. This, I mean, if you like this kind of stuff. This, I should... this has reinvigorated my interest in the franchise. The, um, like the opening stuff, it's like it's in a hotel and he, you know, he gets some nunchucks at one point and that's cool. Mm. But it felt very kind of samey as to what had come before. Like he's hitting 100 guys and he's headshotting uh-huh. and whatever. And like so the, for the first like 40 minutes, I'm like, okay, it's, it's this again. Okay. okay, this is what these are. And then it just gets better and better and better as see, it, as I see, it goes. Even, I feel like even for me, even mm. that opening sequence, the the sequence in the um, Osaka. No, I liked it. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. But it felt like, oh, yeah, no, I've seen these. Oh, see, I don't know. I felt, I even, I felt even like the, the even the martial arts that were being used in, mm. in like the opening sequences, like there was a way more creativity and way more movement. Um, but also just, and you, I think you mentioned this earlier, just the, just the look of this movie. Yeah. Uh, and I again, I sh- what I should have done is do a rewatch of these movies, but I didn't have time. Mm. Uh, all the previous ones, but again, this is this is a movie, James, that I would describe as sumptuous. Oh wow! Another in a long line of movies that I would describe as sumptuous. I'm like, ah, oh, just like what the- other movies would you just? You said long line. We'll some be some other movies. Oh, the menu? you know, sorry, the menu. Does it have to have food in it? No. Okay. No. Is there any food in this movie? No. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah, yeah. No. I'm sure they go to a restaurant. Something. Maybe maybe somebody like drinks from a cup of coffee or something. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Oh, um, Donnie Yen drinks from a little cup of coffee. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Anyway, I've forgotten. Uh, <laughs> and I've forgotten every other movie that's sumptuous. But just like all the sets look incredible. Yeah, the lighting. Just, the and... lighting is just like this. You know, there's there's there'll be a scene just where where two characters get on a train for a minute, and it's just this. this it's just a wash with all this like pink yeah. and blue lighting, and everything's so clear and vivid and like all these really interesting shot choices there's an action sequence in this movie that is it's like a top down i was watching that and i'm like this, this should be a game <laughs> yeah it's like a, would, it's like a top down i was thinking about like the mechanics of a john wick game and i know there are john wick games so uh-huh. there's like a um it's almost turn-based it's, it's called john wick hex <laughs> yes, oh is it like... john wick go or something like it's, that it's called there's john a... wick hex or something okay, like there's that. A game... and it, i haven't played it but apparently yeah. it's really good because there's a hitman go which is sort of like a top down yeah it's that kind and of and it's like it's like um there's a sequence it's very much akin to i don't know if you've ever played hotline miami yeah okay yeah and yeah. it's this sort of really grubby unpleasant yeah. game where you you go into a various you know villains gang houses and you and you so it's like this you smash go smash their head open you go into a room oh yeah and okay you're right it out yeah mm-hmm. Apparently it's great. I should play this actually. Yeah. But um, yeah. But I think also if you did something, this is a bit off topic. But if you did something with this as top down, that is an easier game to build and mechanically give him all the combat and all the yeah. third person action and the gunplay. Like that's a, it's not impossible, mm. but it's a more difficult game to build. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. You know, give it like the Sifu combat on top of everything else that uh-huh. he has to do. Yeah, right. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'd love to play that game if somebody mm. made that game. But yeah, just like everything looks incredible, you know, so many, so many kind of, you know, beautiful locations and yeah. and, and they've And a lot of variety. Like there's a bit where he's in the desert and yeah. it's like a minute long. Yeah. And he's riding a horse and then the Look, if I had a, like, if, yeah. like they the fact that they did that at all yeah. was like you didn't have to you could have set that in an alleyway. But they you know, yeah, they yeah. don't. And I think yeah. there's little things like that which I love. Yeah. Look, I don't think it dragged either. No. I, even though it's nearly three hours. I think I, I do feel like narratively 
it was probably like one fetch quest too many. Okay, sure. Like I feel, you know, there's there's a lot of like he goes to a John Wick. He he wants to he wants to, he's got a goal, yep. which we'll talk about in spoilers, mm-hmm. and uh, he, he wants to get out of the life. And so he goes to somebody and that somebody's like, well, uh, I can help you if you go and do this thing. And then he goes to the next location and that other person's like, well, how about this? I can help you if you fight 100 guys again. Because right. oh, exactly. every time he has to go anywhere, he has to fight 100 guys. But 100 guys. Exhausting. Um, yeah, exhausting. You know what? I think it's sort of – what I what I think maybe this movie sort of lent into was the fact that the, the lore of this universe is kind of exhausting. They kind of stepped away from it a bit, didn't they, in terms yeah. of people handing each other coins and whatever. Yeah, yeah. There's a little bit, but there's way less. But but I feel like John Wick as a character is feels like just he be, he really conveys I'm exhausted with this whole universe. Who am I killing? To yeah. put, how do I what stop is this, this? Why does this keep going kind of thing? <laughs> Who's the guy I have to kill? But he's not self-aware and quipping about it. He's just yeah. a really sin- – and that's why Keanu Reeves works as this character. Yes. He's just so sincere in it. Yeah. And he's just like, well, here we go. Yep, you I know. completely agree. There's, I mean, there's a little bit of – everybody's quite sincere. I guess Ian McShane as the – I mean, there's a dry witticism about him. He's got a dry witticism But, yeah, you're right. He's, but he's, that works with the character. Yeah. And it's not like everybody's – it's not like a Marvel movie where everybody's quipping because you just got to get a quip in. Yeah. Like characters act and speak how, they're, how they've been yes. fashioned to do so. Kind like of John Wick is – Funny in the sense that he he might do something in an action sequence which is funny. Or like there is, and I won't spoil it. <laughs> it's very, it's very funny. Yeah, I know this exactly movie what you're is talking about. Breathtakingly <laughs> sincere, but at like fifteen minutes to the end, there is a physical gag that is so funny. <laughs> There's just one. It's like. There might be other jokes in this movie. No, there are. But I can't remember any of them because there's one joke right near the end that is so funny it's just wiped them all, the rest of them out of my brain. Yep. And it, I, again, it, this movie is worth it for that. I, I completely think. agree. But like, Because it makes also you as the audience kind of feel what he's feeling as well. Like it's, it's, not just like, it's not just like a, hey, that just happened or he's behind me. It's no, like, it, like you said, it's a physical gag. It, yeah. it fits in. It's like a Buster Keaton gag. Yeah. It fits in with the, it like we're emotionally invested, and then the thing happens, and you're like, oh god. Um, <laughs> it's, it, and the gag itself goes for a while. Um, if we're talking about the same, we gag, are. We which are. I'm 100%. pretty sure we are. Um, uh, what what else? Uh, okay, here's something. I think you run the risk uh, in these movies of being like, who's the bad guy and whatever? Who's mm. the head of all of this? And they introduce Bill Skarsgård yes. as like one of the heads of the table. Who's, who runs everything. Yeah. And he's new. Yeah. But it totally works. Like sure. you see, he's very clearly mm-hmm. defined as the villain yep. and his motivations are clear and it's clear as to why John Wick wants to have a confrontation with this man. And he's really sinister and French in this as well. Oh, gosh. Just a, just or possibly a, Belgian. Yeah. <laughs> I think he's, is he supposed to be French? I think he's this? supposed to be French, yeah. yeah. But he's great. He was yeah. really good. And obviously there's a few other inclusions. We get Donnie Yen. Yeah, uh, who's who's uh, reprising his role as a blind kung fu guy? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. is that re- related to real life in some way? Does he have low vision or something like I that? Think is so. that unrelated? Okay, Mate, I don't. Not yeah. to my knowledge. But he's a yeah. He's a guy who's um, yeah. Like like a lot of people have sacrificed their their various digits to this organization. He yeah. sacrificed his eyes somehow, and so he's blind. But he's he's still good with the old. Killing everybody. He'll let you know. And it's about so it. like he's he's got a he's got a separate energy to everybody he else. Does, yeah. He's got a different kind of move set. Yeah. And it's kind of, you know, he'll do a classic kind of wind, he did a wind back up punch. Yeah. <laughs> which is incredible, you know. Because he has to fight differently because I mean he's blind. Yeah. So he has to set up a room and kind of be aware of it in a way mm. that, that others aren't. And there's a few moments where you're like, How blind is this guy? Yeah. <laughs> but I think that adds to the fun of it. Yeah. He's, he's very blind. Uh, we also get Shamir yeah. Anderson as as uh, Mr. Nobody, who's a sort of a new guy. He's he's yeah. he's somebody I think who wants to enter this organization. He's he's a tracker. He's sort of on the outskirts, and he sort of knows about the gold coin situation, yeah. and he wants to be in. And they're like, "Well, uh, it's a big deal if you're big, in. Big deal. Uh, kill John Wick, and you're in." And so he's he's on the sort of the outskirts, and he, and you know, is he going to work with John Wick? Is he going to is he mm. going to you know, turn on him, et cetera. We, so yeah. we got him. Um, who else do we get? Oh, we get we get uh, someone who I'm not familiar with, but apparently he's quite. He's, he's got a couple of movies that in the similar vein that are very good. Scott Adkins. Yeah, he's an amazing stuntman. He was Ben Affleck's stuntman in 
Batman v Superman. Oh, okay. And he's just he's in a bunch of shit. Yeah, he's in a series yeah. called Accident Man, where yeah. he's the titular Accident Man, not Mister Accident. No, that's that is the, Yahoo, Yahoo series. series. Yeah, he's been in. I mean, he's a he's an action star and you know an actor himself, mm. but he often stunts for yeah. like big stuff. But in this, he's a he's a he's a he's a big man. He's a big, large man that's who can fun. still do some big spin kicks some, and so forth. Yeah. yeah, and he's really again he's he's a delightful, delightful character, delightfully horrible character. I think completely agree. And they really, in terms of continuity, they really, they really arranged his sweating. So it, so it really. Yes, he was also Deadpool. Oh yeah, right. For when Ryan Reynolds wasn't being Deadpool in mm. X Men Origins, right, right, right. Yeah. So, the, so there the, you go. Because the original John Wick was directed by two guys, right? It was. Chad Stahelski. Yes. And the other guy. And the other guy directed, I'm going to look this up, but he, he's directed Atomic Blonde. Which are I these in like. the same universe? I don't think they are, no. Okay, great, great, great. Um, and he also directed, um, he directed Bullet Train, which a lot of people don't like, but I thought was pretty fun. I thought it was a pretty I fun. I think that no, uh, says that. David I, Leach is his Yeah, name. I don't think he directed, because he directed Deadpool too. Yeah. He didn't direct one, but he was involved. And he didn't, ah, I see, right. He didn't, but yeah, he was involved in. Oh, and then David Lee directed Hobbs and Shaw, so. I mean, that's nobody's fault. <laughs> it's true. You, could, very, you can't say the action's bad in that movie. <laughs> you can't blame anyone for, for Hobbs and Shaw in a way. That's just, society's fault. It got away from all of us. Yeah, that's true. Uh, who else do we get? Oh, we get Lawrence Fishburne is, yep. is in this. Ian McShane, as I mentioned. Yep. Uh, and, uh, and Lance Reddick, the late Lance Reddick. Yeah. One of his final performances. Absolutely. Not a lot of screen time, but I think he's, you know, he's. he's uh, he has a pretty impactful uh, role in yeah. this. Yeah. yeah. I think um, – what was I going to say, Mason? Oh, who do we also get? We get um, uh, Hiroyuki Sonata as the um, – Oh, yeah, I love him. the manager of the hotel. And then we get Rina uh, Sawayama as his daughter yeah. who – maybe we'll be back for some sequels. I don't maybe know. Maybe some sequels, yeah, some Mason. Sequels. I don't know. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah. Now, do you want to talk about Keanu Reeves' best hair in these movies? Sure, okay, yeah. Because I think his hair in the first one is the best hair. He's grown it out too long, Mason. Doesn't feel yeah, right. doesn't okay. feel practical on a certain Someone point. Could Someone could grab him by the hair. It's wild that nobody they does grab do. him by yeah. the hair. Yeah. yeah. But uh I imagine that's a nightmare for like actual mm. like actual fight choreography on movies, because it's like you don't want to actually wrench a clump <laughs> of somebody's hair out. No, absolutely not. Yeah. So all these killers are like very conscientious about not pulling people by the hair. I think that's very f- fair and cool, Mason. Yeah. Oh, and also Clancy Brown is in this. Oh yeah, Clancy so, yeah. Brown is in this, yeah. Mm. As a guy who's like, something's going on and I'm gonna adjudicate it or whatever. That's right. Yeah. So, I mean, I I'm guess, pulling off a hat. Not everybody can do that these days. <laughs> but I've some, got gravitas. I feel like there's also some great, like, really tense scenes outside of just the action sequences. Like, Mr. Nobody has a confrontation with the head of the crime family. Uh-huh. Not even a confrontation, it's like a discussion, like a deal is met. And that scene is really tense and kind of culminates in a very tense and interesting way. There's a card game sequence, which is really great, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. where they're all sitting around the table. Yeah, yeah. Scott Adkins. And just mm. and uh, oh, and in terms of action, you know, like I, I really like the um the 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 hotel action sequence. Sure. Uh, the Arc de Triomphe stuff is the Arc de Triomphe incredible. sequence, which is, I imagine, a mix of practical and a lot of CG because you can't actually film yeah a car chase around the Arc de Triomphe. But just it's a million killers are out to get John Wick, and he's at the Arc de Triomphe, and, and obviously there's running a, in circles. There, there's a, there's a there's a it's the Arc de Triomphe is a, essentially a really big roundabout. Yes, and so there's a million cars going around, spectacular, really good. They should have called it the really big roundabout. I agree, mm. the really big roundabout. <laughs> yes, the roundabout really big. <laughs> they should be. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, ter- terrific action in a way that I was like. My feeling was going into this, if it's like three, I'll be exhausted by yeah, it. I'll I mean, be exhausted 20 minutes in if the action sequences are the same. We talked about this at the, the start, but um, sorry, before this came out, and just the idea of a three-hour version of like John Wick, I'm like, I don't know if I'm really mm. interested in this, but it it's it's great. It's yeah. really, like, it really surprised me. How much. I think I probably still enjoy the first one the most, but this mm. is a close second. Yeah. If not, maybe it's maybe it is the best one though. Even yeah. probably action wise, it's probably the best one. Yeah, mm. I reckon. What's what's your ranking if we had to rank them? Uh, probably one, four, two, three. Yeah, that seems about right. Or um, or four, one, two, three. I reckon. Hmm. I reckon for me it might be four, two, one, three. Four, two, one. 
Okay, sure. Yeah. Two is good. Again, I again going into this, I'm like, again, silly, silly universe. But if you embrace the silly universe, yeah. I'm like, yeah, no, they, they really did a lot with that, I think. Yeah, so. I don't think you can also go into this if you haven't seen these. Oh, maybe. If you like action, but if you like action movies, you've probably seen the other ones, I assume. Yeah, and if you like action movies and you've somehow missed the other three, the action is going to sustain this, I yeah. think. There, there isn't a lot of like real dead space where it's just people's it's not, it's not talking. the game Dead Space, if that's what you're no, thinking that's true, going yeah. into this. That's the original or the remake. Yeah, they yeah. won't let you play that in a cinema. No. Unless you're on your phone, maybe. Yeah, that's fine. Dead Space Phone. There was a Dead Space Phone. I bet there was. It was called Dead Space Phone. Endless Runner. <laughs> anyway, uh, is that all we have to say about that pre-spoilers? I yeah. Wonder. I think spoiler. that's right. Best I'm movie say ever. Best movie ever. What a, what a Re- time. Really surprised me. Really yeah. liked it. Mm. Uh, good month for movies. Yeah. So far. We watched Shazam the movie. 2. Yep. It was all right. Uh, Dungeons and Dragons, oh, which yeah. we've seen. Mm-hmm. Um, we watched the movie Pixels for Caravan of Garbage. We that both was bad. loved no, that. No, I hated it. That was bad. What's uh, going on here? You always tell them. You always saying that I like these movies. <laughs> What's this new bit you're doing? Where you're like, you like? Them. I just I, forget. Mm, I just forget. I think you don't forget. Anyway, spoilers. Yeah. So Lance Reddick is yeah. killed early on, mm. and it's also, I guess, kind of fortuitous in a way that he, mm. like, for the character that he's dead in yeah, universe, right. uh-huh. I guess. But yeah, that was. Uh, I wish he was in this movie more, especially yeah. now that he's no longer with us. Mm-hmm. But um, I mean, he's he's great. He's all, yeah. he's got a great. Is it two where they have a fight in the hotel together, or is it three that they defend? That's three. That's I three. Think. Yeah, that's yeah. a really great sequence mm-hmm. um, together. So that is a shame. But we'll talk about the future of this series because there might be a prequel with his character yeah, um, right. coming up. But that whole thing because he's killed by uh, Pennywise the clown, Bill Skarsgård, mm. and that he's tall. He's like the tallest man in this by a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Except for um, well, Ian McShane is like four foot eight or whatever. that's true. Yeah. But um, Clancy Brown, Clancy Brown, famously the Kurgan, also very tall. How tall They're is both Clancy? monstrously tall. I reckon he's six five. I don't know if he's. But that. again, Hollywood height, one hundred ninety one centimeters. What's that? Don't know. No idea. No way of knowing. Six three. Okay. All right. Yeah. There you okay. go. Big guy. Yeah. I always get him and Ron Perlman. I put them in the same. If I would have category. one criticism about. The villain the in this and the heights. Mm. Bill Skarsgård does not see. I was expecting maybe we would see some physical prowess from that character, so we know that yes. he's dangerous in that way. But he seems like he would snap like a twig. Yeah, I don't think he is. I think that's the point. That yeah, he's right. a big coward. Mm-hmm, sure. Um, but I guess it also sets up for there's other members of the table because he's one that we see, but there are yeah. others. It mm-hmm. would seem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, I guess the biggest spoiler for this movie is John Wick. He, he dead. Is he? I mean, he got shot a bunch of times. Yeah, but you he know. wasn't wearing one of his famous bulletproof suits. And he was in the it was in a grave at the end. They think. Oh, I see what you're saying. All right. I don't know. I just think we didn't see. Maybe him there's a revival. Get of shot. Some sort. He's not dead. I know they've talked about they're going to end John Wick's story here for now. And they could. They could, mm. and that would be fine. But I, I guess he didn't get obliterated James Bond style. Exactly. But even then, with James Bond, I'm like, mm, well, they, they can. There's an, There was enough. Now that I think about that, and having watched that a couple more times, there's enough wiggle room to be like, no, he was thrown into the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> he came back and he hugged his family and he killed them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just quickly off topic, have you been watching Picard season three? No, not yet. Because they're bringing that back some characters in some crazy ways. Right. This, is this is a little bit of an Easter egg and spoiler for the latest episode. Oh, I know. I, I have seen a little snippet of something. Uh, this is the, the – they have James T. Kirk's body on ice. Yep, they do, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're going to bring Shatner back? I don't think they will. No. They should, mm-hmm. but they won't. But isn't he – doesn't the data suggest that – like doesn't the reading suggest he's dead or – I don't think it matters. Yeah, no, you because it doesn't it, matter. Picard's in a positronic fucking android That's true, body or yeah. whatever. It doesn't yeah. matter. Anyway, no more. They sp- could bring back Shatner in the body that Ryan Reynolds' character has at the end of Free Guy. You know, the, the big <laughs> muscle man. <laughs> they have the technology Absolutely. now. Anyways, the joke. Yes. <laughs> so, do you, you can explain it. If well, you want. the 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 final true action sequence in this movie mm. is that. In order to uh, get out from under the boot, in, to, in order to get table. out from under the boot of the big uh, table of the big table, um, w- John Wick has to make it to a a, a church. What is that? Uh, the um, the Sacre Coeur Church. I've been there. I okay. can't remember. He has to no. get to the. He has, he has to get to the church. Is it relevant that I've been there? That I've travelled? No. Okay. No, but he no has to go cares. up two hundred and twenty-two yes. steps. He has to get up to the. Well, I mean, he, that's not the challenge. They're not like, no. oh, you got up all the steps. Well, that, I actually, mean, for a normal person, that's yeah. a challenge. <laughs> Here's the keys to a 2015 Kia Rio. <laughs> you can leave now. Um, the 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 um, he has to get up the stairs and then he has to defeat Donnie Yen, 
uh, in a in a in a, in a, duel. In a in a classic pistol duel. Yeah. Uh, and and if he if he wins and he lives, he can he can leave the life. Yep. Um, but in order to get to the place, he has to he has to go up the two hundred plus uh, steps, which is sounds pretty easy. But first of all, he's been shot like a hundred times, hit by a few cars, hit by many cars, and like just just hurled off a he's been hurled off a nightclub like second floor. Oh, yeah, he fell off a roof. He fell off a roof. Uh, yeah, Scott Atkins beat him up a bunch of times. Yeah, uh, all sorts of things. Uh, and also everybody's going to try and kill him while he's going up the stairs. Yep. And then he makes it all – he he, he gun Grinds his, his way to the he, top. He gun <laughs> his way up the, up the stairs and then he makes it to the top and there's, he's got a sort of mutton chop nemesis yep. uh, at the top who is – we've encountered him a number of times who just straight up kicks him and he goes all the way down <laughs> back, back to – Well, he goes halfway yeah. and then he kicks him again. And yeah. he, goes, <laughs> he, falls, he falls the first 100 and the next 100. And it's such a <laughs> – He really – you really see him, yeah. And just it's such a like a sustained role, <laughs> and it's it's like a Simpsons gag. Like you yeah, think it's, it's gonna it's a hot rod that movie, hot rod, yeah, like that. Yeah. You think he's gonna stop, and he just never does. No, and it's great. Yeah, it's such a good bit. Yeah, it and really he has to is. fight. And we're, again, we're at that level where, we, as the audience, we're like, oh, this has been. You know, we feel his exhaustion, yeah. and, and we've reached the absolute peak of like, oh, but this is gonna be the end. And then he gets kicked down, and we're like, oh, does he have to do this again? How many more of these guys are there? Yes, mm. but he does it with Donnie N this time. That's true, and that's cool. And Mr. Nobody with his yeah, dog, nice. which I, uh, I like those inclusions. So here's my logistical question. We've always talked about this in the past where sure. the number one thing is obviously if you're one of these assassins, you get paid in these gold coins, the value of which is completely random. You could, it, it, a gold, could get lucky. A gold, a gold coin will get you a night in a hotel or a gun or a pack of cigarettes. They can't give you change. Or at someone all. will beat you up. Someone will beat you up maybe. <laughs> Um, you might be able to get a room at a hotel, yeah. maybe. But the other question is, uh, what are all these guys for? Just like, in the world? Just in the world. Well, the because, world doesn't make sense because every homeless person is part of like, yeah. an underground establishment. Like, but so, There's no cops. No. Like, <laughs> it's just an organized crime. And again, I'm not, I'm not complaining. I've, I've, embraced, no. I've embraced the world. I'm just wondering. like, Because obviously in this universe we have like regular killers. Yeah. Like there's guys, you know, who are like um, – they're mob guys or they're ex-army guys or they whatever. They be sitting around waiting for a call. Exactly. Yeah. We see a bunch of them in the first movie and we see more of them in this movie there. You know, they see the big bounty on John Wick and they're like, all right, time to put on my leather jacket and my newsboy hat and get a rifle out of the fridge or whatever. Damn. And let's go and get in a car and drive around and then John Wick can knock them all off. So those guys already exist. Yeah. But there's also seemingly hundreds of these John Wick-style elite super assassins who were like 10th Dan Black Belt in every – Martial art known to man, and yep. they know gun fu, and they're all wearing bulletproof business suits. Yes, that's a that's a guy you would send to like kill a world leader or something. <laughs> yeah, why are there so many of them? There's got to who be. are they killing? Great question. This is unsustainable. Each other. <laughs> they are mostly killing each other. If it's on, <laughs> honestly, I guess it's like and, and and the the table is this Catholic Church style organization that seemingly has unlimited money and resources. Yep. yep. What? The, where's it? Where's it all going? Half What's of going? them are, are missing a finger. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's wild. Yeah, it really is. And John Wick has to – the reason he's – In this universe, they kill the president every week. <laughs> the reason John Wick is allowed to have the jewel is because he gets he, – he becomes part of a family yeah. by doing a big task. Mm. And then he gets the family crest burden to him and whatever. See, and that's one of the, the fetch quests I feel it should have been compressed in because it's yeah. like he goes to this family who are – Well, so the rules are also way. sometimes arbitrary. Yeah, I mean, there's like okay, I'll get back to the fetch question in a second, but like right at the end, who shoots? Who shoots Bill Skarsgård? John Wick, because he's got his last bullet, right? Yeah, he's got one he bullet does, left. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, the the harbinger, the arbiter, the guy um, Clancy Brown's yeah. like, well, you're free. And it's like you could have very easily said you broke the rules, and now we're going to send more guys at you. <laughs> yeah, but he doesn't care. No, that's true. <laughs> yeah, you, all right, I'll kill. He's him. a ref. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. Yeah. Universe. That's that is true, yeah. But I was going to say, so they, he goes to this family, and he's like, "Well, you know, I've got, I've got. If I can, if you can make me part of your family, then I can go and do this jewel." And they're like, "Well, you have to go and talk to Scott Adkins, and then he'll do, yeah. you know." And then it's a night. Then he has I, to trek I would over. agree with you if I didn't love that sequence. Which one? The bit in the nightclub and the card. Oh, I love the nightclub yeah, yeah. thing. So I'm, I'm fine. I'm I think fine the other. It. I yeah. think maybe. And again, I'm. I didn't. Is make, it the family? Yeah, I reckon family. maybe it should have been a case if he goes to the nightclub to meet the family. Yeah. And then they go, Hello. Well, they go, Hello. They'll be like, <laughs> Oh, you're bothering us in this nightclub. All right. Well, if you go and kill Scott Adkins over there, we'll make you part of the family. And then yeah. it skips the. 
But I think what they've what they've done here is that that's going to set up a series, which we can talk about in a minute. Oh, is that that's connected? Okay, yeah, right. I believe yeah. so. Okay, but uh, I thought the idea to also to end this in a duel. You'd think that wouldn't be super interesting. Yeah, but it is. But it is right. And the way that he wins that duel, just very cool and fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was on the edge of my seat. I was on the edge of my I'm seat. Like, what's going to happen? <laughs> I initially thought maybe Donnie Yen and, and John Wick would turn their guns on on Bill Skarsgård and just shoot him at the same time or whatever. But that's the that's not the rule. It's not the rule, see? It It'd seems as the if rule. they planned it out. Mm. Uh, but then, of course, there's a post credits that neither of us watched. That's right. That we uh, where the daughter of the hotel owner yeah goes after Donnie Yen because yeah, right. he's allowed to see his well not see he's allowed to visit his daughter mm, again. That's right. Uh, because he was in a big duel and he had a big fight yeah. all the time. Anyway, we'll see that when it appears on YouTube, I guess, yeah, or absolutely. probably probably Twitter at this point. Yeah. I mean, I'm fine with not saying that. Like, I get it. Okay, let's quickly do some reviews from people. Okay. And then we'll talk about the uh, what's Spin-offs next. and sequels and so forth. Anyway, I loved that weird duel. What a weird know. duel, mm. Mason. If I may be critical also. What? I think, and I, and I should. I would have worn the bulletproof suit. For well, the to, no, because it's not the rules. I would have, But you're absolutely right. But I would have worn it. No, I know. I would have said this isn't, this is normal suit. Okay, I all right, said, right. Yeah. I would have said this is a bulletproof Hanes beefy tea <laughs> in white. <laughs> Bullet. Anyway, I should have gone back to rewatch, but I'm confident worst suits in the in the in the franchise. Oh, really? I feel like they're worse. What about Donnie Yen's outfit? Didn't like it. Really? No, didn't I didn't like, like his initial outfit and wig. Right. Whatever that was uh-huh. that he was doing. But yeah, after he got... didn't like his turtleneck. Didn't like any John Wick suits. Again, I should have gone back, but John Wick suits seem cheaper. Okay. And you might be like, well, look at that Skarsgård. Looks like a clown. That well, guy. he is a clown. He is a clown. That's true. He's literally a clown in many in many movies. But I didn't like the tailoring. It just looked okay. worse. I don't know. And I guess I mean, that's your area. So well, who am I to say? Well, very arguably. But <laughs> but also, I thought like a lot of the the table assassins. I know they're they're supposed to look like kind of cheap gangsters. Yeah. But they really look bad. Okay. I think that like you know like the the mutton chops guy, the yeah the, yeah the weird facial hair guy. He should have looked nicer in the suit. Do you suit. think it's a movement situation? Well, the pants are very tight on all yeah. those suits. Like, if you can see, like, creases on the back of your knees in a suit, yeah, pro- pants are probably too tight. Oh, my pants too tight, Mason? Yeah, they are. Embarrassing. Well, even my jeans? You have all these photos. Here you go. You, <laughs> you never get to see these, but they're very embarrassing. I don't know, but it just, they just I, – okay. I feel like the suit should have been, like – A wider cut? No, but they just should have been, like, more – There's there's a difference between, like – like a nice Were they fabric, like thin almost. No, they just had that weird shiny fabric. They looked okay. like like cheap gangsters because suits. everybody was wet all the time. Everybody was very wet. Okay, you're absolutely right. No, no, I, that's again, that's your area. This is from Nate. <laughs> Hashtag weekly. Didn't Planet take Pod. me out of the movie, but I did think about Sounds it. Sounds like it did, Mason. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nate says, "Just saw John Wick Four. It's a homoerotic poem of gun fu and nut shots. Best movie ever." And the Nick Abide says, "Just hashtag Weekly Planet Pod and hashtag Best Movie Ever." Uh, Nate says, between the side quest, boss battles, and the top-down fight scene, not only is John Wick Chapter 4 the best movie ever, it's also the best video game movie ever. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Now, in terms of what's coming up next, there is going to be a prequel series which is set in the 70s uh, in the Continental Hotel mm-hmm. with a young Winston and a young uh, Charon. So they are going to be recast, mm. and that's going to explore running okay. a hotel together. So that could be us. That could be us. We could do it. We could do we'll it. Do it. Yeah. We'll do it. We'll do it, Mason. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Um, they were going to, well, obviously they're going to um, recast Lance Reddick, but also obviously the other guy whose name is? Ian McShane. Ian McShane. So there Do you, you go. think it's going to be weirder or less weird in this in this era? Oh, I was in like 1970s weird, mate. Probably uh, will be, yeah. I hope it's weird. <laughs> or it's going to be like um, Dumbledore and Fantastic Beasts where everybody's normal, 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 <laughs> normal, and then it gets super weird. Like it's just, it's a season of like completely normal stuff and people are, Doing a, doing hits and getting like briefcases full of cash, yes. and in the last episode, somebody's like, "I've invented the gold coin, and everybody's going to get paid in this." Oh, can oh how much is it worth? Don't know. What do you think? <laughs> what do you? And then this, the, <laughs> the precedent is set. Nobody can agree on how much anything's worth. And then it's just like two decades of like the assassin economy is crumbling. What's happening? Or it's doing really well. No. <laughs> So there's that series, and there's also the uh, the ballerina series starring mm. Anna de Armas. Yeah, and that follows her and the Rush the Rushka Roma family, which is the family that he goes and visits. Ah, uh, okay. Becomes a part of, and it's set between movies three and four. So that's why Keanu Reeves is going to appear. Ah, uh, right, 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 right. Yeah, and that's why they said Anna de Armas isn't here. You just missed her. You just missed her. She was. She's She'll down, be back. She's down, down the shops. Oh, you're going. Okay. Okay. 
We'll tell you said hi. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so there you go. That's coming up next. And I think this is not going to be the last John Wick Ooh. appearance or okay. movie. Well, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if he should, if it's if the TV series is set between three and four. I wouldn't be surprised if he's in it a little bit. Yeah. Now, yeah. Is the ballerina a TV series or is it a movie? Mason? I, I think, think it's a TV remember. series. I think it's a TV series. I think, I think it's right. a TV series. Yeah. But no, he is in it. He's been confirmed. Oh, right, right, right. Okay, correct. Yeah. Mm. Also confirmed, I saw some footage of him. I think it's from John Wick Four, where he's oh, like, it's a movie, apparently. Yeah. Okay, right. He's uh, he's like he's like carrying crew bags up the stairs of that scene. He's just like, I'll I'll give you a hand. And what's this in? Keanu Reeves. Oh, like really? Some behind the scenes footage. He's ah. just like, I'll give, give you a hand with these bags. Oh man, if I was a rich and famous and handsome Hollywood it's, actor, I wouldn't help anybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd be yeah, the yeah. most selfish man in the world, oh, Mason. Mason. He's helpful. He's generous. He's got an age appropriate girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> what can't he do, this guy? My goodness. I know. He can ride a motorcycle. He can ride a motorcycle. Yeah, that's that's right. cool. Mm-hmm. All right, Mason, should we move on? Yes. Good movie. I think it was a good movie also. What, what's the next segment called? It's called What We're Reading. What else is it called? What We're Gonna Read. What do I do now? Shut up. Okay. I'm doing the theme. What are we reading today? What are we, this is, what are we doing? This is what we talk about, what we're doing. It's what we're reading or whatever. It's not what we talk about, what we're doing. No, that's true. If, we t- if it was for us talking about what we're doing, we'd be like, we're recording a podcast right that's now. That's true. It'd be the same every week. It would just go, yeah, mm. snake eating its own tail situation. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm going to do a full rewatch of John Wick's one through three. Wow. Because maybe gonna... I'll uncover hidden depths of three, or I'll be like, man, I'm tired from watching one and two. <laughs> <laughs> Three is exhausting. Yeah, I would think I would maybe just, I'll, yeah. Maybe I'll uncover hidden depths or maybe I'll have exactly the same experience as the previous. That's very interesting, Mason. Mm. Would well, you know what I've been doing? What you been doing? No, I said I'm going to be a very patient young man. Young. I'm a young man relative. Oh, yeah. Um, you're relative to a very old man, wouldn't you say? Yep. Thank you. Uh, and I said I was going to- Not a compliment. I said I was going to wait- <laughs> For Resident Evil 4 Remake until oh, yes. it was cheap. And then I just went and bought it. You just it. bought it. Okay, great. Uh, I know people are saying that games have gone up in price. Uh-huh. But in Australia, they've been the same. But that's because they all started out They all started high. out at like $100 plus. Yeah, this yeah. This was like 20 fucking plus years ago. Yeah, yeah. And now you can get them for maybe like 80 or 90 if you're yeah, lucky yeah. and brand uh-huh. new. Anyway, so I went and bought Resident Evil 4 Remake. Everybody loves Resident Evil 4, Mason, including me. Mm-hmm. It's one of my favorite games. Um, it's terrific. I love it. Great. It's, uh, the, the modern mechanics are good. They've changed a lot of the stuff of the world for the better. Like mm-hmm. they've fleshed it out more. There's more side story, expo- not even side story, just collect some stuff, which I don't love, uh-huh. but there's rewards. Like the more stuff that you gather and get and chests that you open and mm. things that you find, you buy, you get better guns. So I'm like, yeah, right. well, I'm going to do that, aren't I? Yeah. Um, some people might say Resident Evil. I say Residu, Ooh. Mason. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you ever played, you've seen me play the old one at least. Yes, I, I know have. that's, that's true. a fact. Yes. But um, no, it's well worth it if you like these games and i look i didn't love the resident evil 2 remake because it was all set in the one place and it's like it's a lot of like backtracking and again a lot of the Mm. finding key stuff which i don't love happened Uh and it's like what's the code for this lock and i'm like i don't fucking know i think aesthetically also i prefer the previous resident evil games like one through probably not five but yeah (laughs) uh but as opposed to the seven and eight and which are like first person but they're also way more like unpleasant gross and grossy Gro- gross and I grossy, tried yeah. a bit of six or seven and uh-huh. then I played and I bought eight the werewolf one because they're like oh. it's a lot like four mm-hmm. and I just I just couldn't kind yeah. of mesh with it mm-hmm. it was also too puzzly and I don't like too puzzly mm-hmm. yeah that's right I like the good combination but no this is uh the action's like really great so like they've kind of every all the characters like as in the, the villain the villainous villages and whatever they're all like ramped up a bit they're all yeah. a little bit more dangerous and a little bit faster but but so are you has that guy with the bag on his head in a chainsaw yeah he's great i love it, it was good to see him again <laughs> um and they've kind of toned down some of the nonsense stuff but the pervy stuff that they have toned down it seems to be at least i'm not all the way through it yet but uh-huh. um you've checked all the pervy stuff from the previous game <laughs> most of it is gone i've come back around to this one but um mm. i'm probably about half way through it at this point mm. and it it, it feels fresh because, like, it is the same. Like, a lot of it is the same game, but you know, often you come into an era and you're like, "Oh, this is new. I don't know this," or "Oh, this is a variation on that previous thing," and whatever. Anyway, shotguns always good, mate. Nice. Shotguns always good. You know, we didn't even mention the, uh, the John Wick soundtrack. I thought oh, it was yeah. really good. Okay, I'd, and I don't normally notice soundtracks. I didn't I notice it, but I I remember thinking it was I. Which is good, I guess. It was some real bleepy, blor- it was right, like a real, bleep, 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 real sort of bleepy, bloppy electronic soundtrack. Sort of to me, it was sort of reminiscent of like a Blade Runner. Oh, okay. 2049. It was Tyler Bates who's done a bunch of uh, Blade Runner movies. No, 
He did the um, the soundtrack for the movie Soldier, which is set in the Blade Runner universe. Oh. Is that true? No, he didn't do that. Okay, great. Um, all the John Wicks and uh, I think some Marvel stuff. I think maybe he did. Did he do I'll Iron check, Man 3? I'll it up now. If you could. Oh, this guy looks like a very much musician kind of guy. Mm. Well, he did Atomic Blonde. Guardians of the, the Galaxy is the score. He did, uh, he did the original motion picture soundtrack for 300. There you go. And Atomic Blonde. Yeah. There you go. I said that, Mason. Oh, yeah. He did Deadpool 2. Oh. So, yeah, there you go. Oh, and I'm going to watch. What are you going to watch? Come up. I'm going to watch the movie X. You know, has that. Oh, I watched that one. You know, there's that movie. There's Pearl and there's X. Yeah, so. so yeah. I watched the first, the X. I haven't watched Pearl yet. Yeah, well, see, Pearl came in in 2022 everywhere except Australia, where it only just came out. Oh, I did watch it on streaming or something. Didn't oh, I? There you go. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but so, and Pearl is the prequel to X. So I've got to watch X before I watch Pearl, which is sort of the. Um, so you're gonna watch? Yes. Yeah, that mm-hmm. makes sense. Exactly. Yep. Yes. Uh, so it's a it's a it's kind of a grotty, grimy situation. Yeah, I have a, I'm, I'm on holidays, so I'm gonna uh, catch up on a bunch of stuff. So Does that mean watch- you're not gonna be doing the show? No, I'm not on holiday from this. Okay. I'm never on holiday from this. <laughs> Even when we're not doing it. Even when we're actively not doing it. I'm still. That's good. I'm thinking a little goofs and gags, you know. Oh, you know yeah. Like? yeah. I do love a goof and a gag. It's true. It's very true. Should we move it to the next segment of the show then? Um, we should momentarily. So you've seen X already. You thought you, yep. was it good? Yeah. Was it it's good. Okay. It's got, um, what's her name from Scream and Wednesday and whatever. Rachel Zegler? Jenna, Jenna Ortega. Ortega, yeah. There we go. Among others, yeah. Love it. Mm. Anyway, the next segment is called Letters. Is it? It goes like this. The classic one was oh, It goes like this. We love you. It goes like this. Nice. Instead, it goes like this. Oh, it goes like this, yes. Can you be more specific? I got it here right now. We're going to do letters. No. <laughs> He's back, my famous character. Long reaction time, man. He's come back. If you uh, do want to reach the show, it's simple. All you have to do <laughs> is hashtag Weekly Planet. just a Planet. case of one, two, three. That's all you got to do. Mm-hmm. Hashtag Weekly Planet Pod on Twitter or weeklyplanetpod at gmail.com. Also, tell me, what's the best walking treadmill? What's the best walking treadmill so I can walk and work at the same time? Are you going to do a walk and work? I'm going to walk and work, Mason. Huh. Yeah. Like so a standing desk and a... Yeah. Huh. Or I'll stand and play a video game. I thought I'd finish Resident Evil. Oh, yeah, but okay. I'll probably finish it before right, the, right, right. the thing arrives or uh-huh. whatever. Yeah. You could just stand on the spot. I want something that's quiet. I don't okay. want a buzzing machine buzzing away at okay. me. Okay, right. I don't want anything that's got a Bluetooth to fucking my fridge or whatever. Just okay. a thing where you press a button. And okay, it so you don't want you don't want it to connect to your fridge or my phone or my face. You don't want it to be filled with bees because that would be buzzing. I don't want that. Okay, all right. yeah, I can't help you. Wasps, I'm okay with. I'm just naturally very fit, so I don't. Have okay, to do you don't need. Yeah, so. that's fair yeah, enough. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you do the Dennis Reynolds butterfly. Yeah, I, I'm pretty much when I play video games, I have to eat ice cream while I'm doing that because <laughs> otherwise I'll just get too muscular, <laughs> too embarrassingly muscular, honestly. <laughs> I understand. My problem. But I don't understand, but that yeah, sounds, yeah, yeah, yeah. sounds hard. Few people do understand. I'd imagine you know? so. Yeah. Probably Scott Adkins would understand. He's on the Adkins diet. That's right. Mason, have you got a letter? Here's an email. What? From James. That's me. Hello, chaps. Hello. Just thought I'd drop you a note to say we listened to the most recent episode on a bullet train across Japan. Whoa! It was shockingly busy, so we were standing for the entire time, but your ever, ever entertaining banter kept us smiling. Keep up the great work. Should have got a walking treadmill on there. Also, I now fully expect other listeners to bombard you with far more weird and wonderful listening locations. Yeah, that'd be cool. Can we be the official Japan honeymooners of the pod? Cheers from James. Congratulations, James, Yay. and partner on your honeymooning. Yeah. And partner, wedding. no name. Uh, is that the fastest land-based listen to the podcast? Mm. Do you think perhaps somebody's listened whilst in a drag racer or rocket car? I would love to know that, actually. Me too, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Or shooting into space. Mm. Oh, I astronaut? finished Poker Face as well. Poker Face. Good show. It is a good show. Did really you good. I didn't. I did finish it. Ah, I thought it was terrific. And now we have to wait 10 years. <laughs> it has been renewed season. for a season two. For people who are, who are on the fence, it's, it's coming back. It's kind of crazy how good the writing is in each episode. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, how is Ryan Johnson doing this on top of everything else that he's doing? I don't know if he's writing every episode. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, or directing. So. But that I knew. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's good. Mm. And for, you know, without giving anything away, uh, the premise of the second season is going to be pretty much the same as the first season. She's just going to be on the run. Yep. Go in different towns, do weird pa, jobs pa, poker, and face, pa, getting pa, involved poker. in people's murders. Yep. You know, I like it a lot. I like it too. Yeah. Uh, do, you, do you have an email? This is from Big Cat who says meow. Hashtag weekly oh, nice. pod. Mason, uh, yes? you played D&D. Can you tell us about your favourite character? What class, race, personality, how they died, and which realm did you play in mostly? Forgotten Realms, Dragonlance, Erebor, er, er, Eberon, etc., or a homebrew realm? I can't remember any character names, but I played a uh, cleric. Mm-hmm. Pretty good. Do you have a staff? Yes. What did it do? Magic stuff. Like what? Lightning bolts and stuff. That's cool. Pretty 
skill, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's better than waiting for lightning. That's true. Yes. It's way better. Hey, uh, we'll fight this dragon, but I'll just be here and wait for some inclement weather. <laughs> <laughs> I can maybe some, maybe it'll get hit by lightning. <laughs> uh, I mostly played in uh, Ravenloft. Yeah. It was the gothic horror campaign setting. Mm. Uh, and Planescape, which was like a dimensional, like a, like a, like a, there's a, it's it's set in a there's a there's a place called Sigil which is the center of the universe and then from Sigil you can go to like any number of different dimensions you can go to like different other different realms you can okay. go to like uh, like heavens and hells and uh, world uh, dimensions where everybody's a mechanical man or whatever everyone's a mechanical yeah, man. everyone's a mechanic everyone's a mechanical man I'm just looking at the one time that I played Dungeons and Dragons was that this was for D and D's for nerds this is from 2015 yeah. but the episodes are still available uh, it's called D and D is for James nice. if you are interested uh, in any of those I was the last mm. time I remember it was just before or around the time I had yeah. my first kid so mm. I haven't interacted with anybody since yeah, yeah. So it's right. the last time I've been <laughs> in a room with anybody yeah yeah uh, a lot of good, lot of good uh, Dungeons and Dragons settings. Some of which yeah. sort of went by the wayside and became non-canonical, and I think some have come back. Yeah. There's one called Spelljammer, which is basically like uh, mag- magic-powered spaceships. Okay, that look like you know, like like you know, ocean ships. Yeah, yeah but they go space. They go space. That's great. It's like you know how there was that old belief that planets existed in these crystal spheres, and then in between there was like like weird eth- eth- ethereal like ectoplasm. Okay. Well, that was a theory. Yeah, well, I don't know if it was a theory, but I think it was maybe a sci-fi concept. Sounds real to me. Mm, but in the in the Dungeons and Dragons universe, that's real. Oh, okay. You get, a, get on a magic powered ship and you can go to a different planet. I just saw Dark Sun, which is a, a world in which that's great, which is like a post-apocalyptic mm. uh, fantasy setting. So initially, it had like all your classic elves and dwarves and and orcs and so on and so forth. But then magic annihilated the entire planet. Now it's a desert world. Are they all right? No, they've already. It sucks. It's one <laughs> one of the worst worlds you can be in. Okay, great. Yeah, but you can go there on a boat. No, you can't because that world is cut off from the rest of the universe. Oh my god, how embarrassing! Very embarrassing. For how them. did you get Uber Eats or whatever? You couldn't. What? Yeah. Can, so I wouldn't go there, would I? You couldn't get there, probably. Yeah, but I wouldn't go there. Good idea. That's <laughs> that's wise. I didn't play a bunch of characters, but yeah, just uh, you were mostly yourself. Yeah, just me. <laughs> I was. Yeah, gotta be real. I insist on being me. <laughs> You gotta, you gotta do that. You gotta do it. Yeah, yeah. but I'll be playing. Um, as I mentioned, I'll be playing in, in the Melbourne International Comedy Festival. I think oh yeah, I mentioned that previously. It's going to be apparently like a nineteen sixties kind of uh, Austin Powers style adventure. Oh, so it's not going to be a fantasy adventure God. at all. But uh, who's what's going to happen there? You're going to be playing you. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah. That's great stuff, and yeah, I yeah. love it. And I haven't even been born then. For decades. <laughs> I won't be born for decades, so I'm going to be pretty quiet. This is fascinating stuff. Mm. Do you have another letter? I'll find one. Well, while you're doing that, I've got one here from Santa Claus if he came on Labor Day. Hashtag Weekly Planet Pod. If someone gave you several thousand dollars with one condition that it could only be spent on arcade machines from your childhood. I'd buy some arcade machines. What three arcade machines? Ooh. Ninja Turtles. I would. I was going to say I would get Daytona, but I wouldn't. I would get Mario Kart, the arcade cabinet. Was there so a Mario could, Kart? There was. Kart so I could I'm, play. I believe with my you. Kids. There is Mason. Mm. I've looked into it. It's very yeah, expensive. Right. You can also get those. I mean, assuming you can't get one of those arcade cabinets that have a million games in it. Yeah, right, right, right. Or like you can get the car one, but it's got a million different yeah, car games yeah, in yeah. it. So I pick Mario Kart, real Kart. Mm. Though. What about? Can I get a Neo Geo cabinet? No, Mason. You got one big game. Oh, right. I don't care. It's not real. <laughs> yeah, right. Whatever. That is true. Ooh, Mortal Ultimate Mortal Kombat three. Really? Maybe. I'd go two. Interesting. Or would I go three? I don't like Sub-Zero's Unmasked. It upsets me, Mason. But with the Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3, I think you can play either Sub-Zero. Oh, then I'll get I'm that one. i sure, yeah. Maybe Super Street Fighter 2? You, you want a brawler in there? Or one of the Dungeons & Dragons games. Oh, yeah. Which were good. Uh, brawler, maybe a brawler. Well, I said Ninja Turtles. Original Ninja Turtles. Ninja Turtles. Yeah, 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 yeah. A Ridge Ninja. What about yourself? Daytona, you said no. No, I'd get the Mario Kart one. Yeah, yeah, and you've got two. You've got two more then. I'd get. Oh, I'd get the Star Wars arcade battle pod. Whoa. It's a new one. It's a big pod, and wow. you sit in it. You, it's a new one. It's, did you it's say? like from like five years ago. That's you, not your childhood, James. It has to be from your childhood. Doesn't say childhood. Yes, it does. It says you can pick one from five years ago. It doesn't say that. <laughs> it does you're say a liar. childhood. You're right. Yeah. Damn it. Is there another Star Wars thing that would be good? Yeah, but they're not. I want that one. Well, well you we, can't have it. I mean, there's that one that we played. You know, we did the arcade one. It's on Caravan of Garbage. Oh, yeah. Where you fight Boba Fett and whatever. Yeah, I want, right, I want right, that right. one. I don't want. Mm. Can, I have, can I get the pod race? No, I don't want another racer. Mm-hmm. Fuck. I'd, I'd probably want an arcade fighty one. So I guess I'd pick. 
Maybe an X-Men one? That that like eight player X Men one, whatever it's called. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Six players. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Which was based on the which was based on the X Men animated pilot. Yeah. Right the, of the X Men that didn't get picked up. Yeah, yeah, that one's great. But I'm not doing like a Pac Man. Maybe I'll do an NBA jam. Or maybe a shooting one. Yeah, nice. Like a time crisis? Yeah, something like Oh no. Remember that sniping game? Yes. We had a sniper rifle. Sure. And you look through the scope and this it's got a little screen in the s- scope, so it looks uh-huh, closer uh-huh, through uh-huh, the uh-huh. scope. I get that. So I get Mario Kart, yeah, nice. I get that weird sniping one, and I get the third thing that I said, which is what a, the Star Wars Battle Pod. Yeah. You can't have a <laughs> – don't slip that one through the end. <laughs> the you can't X-Men, do the it. The X-Men one, though. You thought, you thought about that. I've thought about, and I could never obviously do it because it's ridiculous. Mm. What if I dug a room out under this studio and just, <laughs> okay. put, and just put arcade cabinets in there? It's- and not me, obviously, like pay somebody to and do it. And not plugged in, just yeah. falling on their side and stuff. Yeah. It would only be what? Hundred thousand dollars? That's too much, I think. Maybe. Yeah, no, it's too much. I I reckon. <laughs> okay, but I've got unlimited money here. That is true, actually. How would they even get the battle pod under the with the ground? As soon as we finish recording this, I'll think of a million arcade cabinets, and I'm like, oh my god, that one was incredible. Okay. Because like Mortal Kombat One was yeah. like a revelation at the time. I remember. It was, it's probably, yeah, but by today's standards, it's not, not it's as like great, it's yeah. good, but it's yeah, like yeah. yeah. Mm. But again, it is from our childhood, isn't it? Point blank. No, original Double Dragon. One of those ticket games where you throw a basketball. Oh, into and then a I could, <laughs> you could and I could win. set up a booth in my house. Yeah, and I could exchange the tickets for stuff in my house. I Some already have, and then I could use about. the stuff in my house. Something to think about. Here's an email from Daniel. Daniel, uh, hello, James Meso and Little Meso. Not Terminator Two is the arcade game. I want a free ha- free ha- handing gun, except for the oh, because they were mounted, weren't they? Yeah. Uh, Long time listener, first time writer. Just wanted to ask if you played the new Resident Evil Four yet. James has. Not nah, haven't. Maybe I'll get into that. No, you won't. Uh, it's so amazing and definitely worth it. I also wanted to ask you guys if you had any plans to cover the controversial W.S. Anderson Resident Evil movies on Caravan of Garbage. Yes. Fun fact, somehow combined they grossed well over $1 billion. Yeah, they, re- they did really well in total because they don't cost anything to they make. They don't cost anything to make, um, yeah. Yeah, there's just a lot of them. So we've yeah, definitely yeah. thought about it, but we'd have to break it up. And... Yeah, yeah, because there is six or seven or yeah, something of them. The, so... the sweet spot I've found with series it's mm-hmm. um, Caravan of Garbage. It's three. Yes, right. Four is, I feel like, slightly too long because then it's like the it's, – but three is good, two is not enough, and one is mm. one, is one obvi- obviously, which we do one-offs every now and then. Like we just did Dungeons and & Dragons and we're doing um, yeah. pixels this week. And, again, for people who don't know, a little peek behind the curtain, but I'm sure most people have figured this out already. Uh, when we cover anything, it's often because it's related to something else in the media. Like if they're yeah. doing a remake of something, then we'll cover the original or what have you. Or if they, you know, we, we, we covered – the 1990s Flash TV series because the Flash is yeah, coming out exactly. and so on and so forth. So Not have, strictly. Yeah, but, but, but mostly. Sometimes yeah. we've got a free week and we'll yeah. just do something dumb. Um, but, yeah, I think we'd probably wait for, like, something Resident Evil related. I know there was a there Resident was a Evil TV series, series but nobody yeah. watched it. Yeah. So. And Lance Reddick was in it. And Lance Reddick was in it. And obviously, like, yeah, now would have been a good time with Resident Evil 4 coming out. But, um, mm. yeah, no, I do want to look at those. There's just a lot of stuff yeah, yeah. to look at, though. I'm always looking at something. I'm always looking at something. Also, I think people are going to be pretty happy with what's coming up after Pixels. No spoilers. Mm. Should we just tell people? If you're listening here. What was it? Uh, Batman Forever. Oh, yeah. We're doing right. Batman Forever and Batman and Robin. All Batman right. Forever is recorded. We yes, that's right. Here's, here's an email from Jacob. Mm. Hey, James and Mace. I was listening to the Shazam episode and was super pumped to hear you talk about beef. Beef? I've been listening since I was a sophomore in college, on break, refurbishing a high school as my summer job, and now I'm living in Los Angeles working locations on a show you guys are talking about. Spent six months working on beef, found a bunch of locations for it, and the podcast was definitely listened to on set on more than one occasion. Yes. You guys fed my love of movies and TV through the years of me working towards the career I have now, so thanks a million and hope you enjoy the show. I hope we enjoy the show also. It looks I, good. That's, yeah. Mm. So it's a show. I thought it was a movie. It's a show, I think. Is it? Good. I'm pretty sure I, it's a I, show. I really like that trailer. Mm. It's called Silent Scope or Silent Scope 2. But yeah, beef was <laughs> great. <laughs> um, imagine being a location guy. That's your job. You go around. You're like, this, this looks is good. good. This one looks bad. They're, actually. Like, they're like, find a bridge. Find a, <laughs> we're going to record under a bridge. You're going to find some good bridges. And you'd have, you'd have a library of bridges in your head. Ready Weird to go. bridges, you know? Yeah, you would. I guess it would help if you spent a lot of your life under bridges. Yeah, they're like a general. troll. Yeah, you're like a troll. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, I guess also like because it, it used to be for like if you're an art comic book artist or I guess any kind of artist, you used to have a bunch of like reference photos of yeah, things that yeah, you yeah, needed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now you can just be like, what does a chair look like? And you Google it or whatever. Was it sure. similar for this where like you've got like a catalog of locations? Do you use like Google Maps and Street View a lot to find things? 
Like, do you ring around? Be like, I need an abandoned petrol station. That's true, yeah. Shazam 2 or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Well, you yeah. ring all the people that live in abandoned petrol stations. And you go, hello. Yeah, that's right. And then if nobody answers, <laughs> mm-hmm, then mm-hmm. you know it's abandoned. That's true. This is from Nicole Mason. Hello, Nicole. Who says, hashtag Weekly Planet Pod. Since Aussies are basically Floridians, that's probably true. <sighs> all what, right, yeah. Who do you think would win in a fight? A gator, mm-hmm. as in an alligator. Sure. Or the largest dog you've ever seen? A gator. Depends on the size of the gator, but yeah, probably the gator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah don't, under, don't underestimate a gator. Or a I dog. don't think anybody does, but. Some people do. You yeah. see videos of someone's like tapping the inside of their mouth and then they death roll someone's arm off. Yeah. It happens quite a lot. A dog will rarely death roll your arm off. Yeah, it can happen. More often than not, it won't. It'll go, roll. ah, I love scratches. Ah. That's true. Biggest dog? It would have to be the biggest vicious dog. Gators might enjoy scratches, yeah. but. They will sacrifice scritches. Just to bite you. Just to bite you. Yeah. Because <laughs> they love eating flesh more than they like getting scritches. As That's far true. As I know. Yeah. I agree with mm. you. Yeah. But no, uh, gator. And also, they've got the home ground advantage the water. Mm. The land would be different. But even then, I don't think a dog could kill an alligator yeah, as yeah. easy as an alligator could kill a dog. That's true. Yeah. Oh, and here's one, one more email, James. Yeah. This is from Sam. Sam? This is a good question, I think. How you watch films? Hey, James and Mason, recently I decided to hey, watch... you watch films. Hey, you watch films. Recently I decided to watch The Banshees of Inner Sheeran for a film assignment. i got to watch that. To watch, I did, it's good. Uh, to watch and write a review for my film class. And it got me wondering, how do you two watch films for Caravan of Garbage or straight to streaming films? Do you take notes while in watching or do you take mental notes and write them down later? Personally, I don't like any interruptions or t- even to have anyone in the house as I sometimes struggle to pay attention at the best of times to the point I will turn my phone off and put it in a different room completely. I uh, hope you both well. That's from Sam. That's a great question. Depends great what question. I'm doing. If I'm going to the movies, I yep. don't write any notes. Uh-huh. Unless I – this doesn't even really happen. But if <laughs> I re- think of something where I'm like, I'm 100% not going to remember that. But yeah, then yeah. when I think yeah, about yeah. that, I'm not going to remember you it. You stand up in remember. front of the screen and you get your phone out and you're tippy-tappy. And I – yeah. And right. your phone's not on silent. <laughs> yep. And it goes clickety, 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 clack. And then I get my phone to read it back to me out nice. loud. Nice. Um, but no, so I don't in the movies. And what's, and what, what's good about that now is – we see movies, I don't know, like, well, I normally see them on, like, Thursday, Friday. We uh-huh. record, like, Saturday, Sunday normally. And so I've I, I've thought about it. And over a few yeah. days, like, I'll think of a thing, I'll open my phone, I'll punch in a quick note. Yeah. And that's how I – I mm. used to – because I used to do reviews straight away. So, you, do, you know, you're trying to get your thoughts straight. And it's mm. just not a good way to do it, yeah. I have found. So other people are yeah, good yeah. at that, but so, I'm not. So, same. So if I'm watching in the cinema or I'm watching a new release for the first time at home, mm. if uh, – yeah, it's – Obviously, in the cinema, it's phone away. Yeah. Uh, same at home. If, it, if it's a first-run thing and it's just watch the whole thing, gather your thoughts. Yep. Maybe make notes if it's, you know, interesting. Caravan of Garbage. That's different. It's always phone <laughs> at the ready. Yeah. Sometimes I take notes, sometimes I don't. And within five minutes, I'll know whether it's a note film or not a yeah. note film. But it's no, there's no correlation. Like, it's never like, well, I've seen this movie ten times, so obviously I won't need to take notes. Yeah. It's just whatever. Yeah. Or, or, or vice versa. Sometimes if, if, I'm, if I'm watching this movie for the first time, maybe I don't need to take notes mm. or maybe I do. But obviously there is a correct way to watch movies, which is just no, watch it. <laughs> no distractions, you know, get in, you know, watch the whole thing. How does it make you think? How, what does it make you think? How does it make you feel, et cetera? Yeah. You know, watch it uninterrupted. Don't, don't be distracted by anything. But for Caravan of Garbage, I don't think anybody is – watching those videos for us to be like, yeah, I watched this and it had a great vibe and it had a nice time. Anyway, yeah. bye, everyone. Yeah. They want us to be like, did you see that guy? That Pick extra- a weird specific yeah. thing. Yeah. Like, did you see that extra at the, in the first minute? He was like, well, you know, we want, we want yeah. that and we want the visual. And so you kind of have to sacrifice exactly. the viewing experience for, and, for and if, yeah. Well, often for Caravan of Garbage as well, we've seen it. That's Pixels true, yeah. we hadn't seen. And yeah. that was, it's dreadful. It's a dreadful yeah, yeah. movie. So yeah, the, the way to not watch these movies is to stop every minute and go scribble a note. Yeah. Down, but you got to. Sometimes listen. you do. And like my notes will be, I would usually have my laptop open. I've got like a rough eyed, like you've, if anybody's seen Caravan of Garbage, there is a rough kind of outline to it that yeah. I try and keep to. And afterwards I'll organize my notes properly and I'll watch as much behind the scenes stuff as I can, mm. find interviews, IMDb trivia, which is mostly lies, but I'll, yeah, have, a, I'll right. have a look down there Sometimes as well. entertaining lies. Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes, and often at IMDb, like you read the same thing like six times, yeah, like right. somebody's put it in, which is, I guess, annoying. If I were watching a movie for film studies, I would like to think that I'd watch it twice. Yeah. Once watching it purely with no distractions and then second time yeah. make notes. 
But based on my own academic experience at uni, mm. I would probably only watch it the once. Yes, that's right. Because I left myself literally only two hours to watch the movie and write the essay. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I would watch it and take notes probably at the same Absolutely. time. Absolutely. Yeah, if, if you're doing it for any academic purposes as opposed to for, you know, cheap entertainment on YouTube, I would say watch it once all the way through. Yeah, exactly. Before, before you even before you even learn anything about it or even yeah. do any research or learn about the director or the – the behind the scenes or the making of or what have you. Just watch it and go, what did I What did I feel? What am I feeling What right am I now? feeling? Did I get a good vibe? Oh, another thing I'm doing, I'm taking down time codes for um, thumbnails. Oh, yeah, right. So I sure. do that as well as, <laughs> sure. I, yeah. as I go through. Mm. But, I, no, it is – it's not – like the way that I watch movies of Caravan of Garbage is not how I watch anything else. Like that is specifically yeah. for that. And, again, it's like you said, it's to be like what's something that somebody maybe hasn't noticed or – Maybe someone has mentioned this, but I could elaborate on it or, yeah, right, or right, I, right. I think it's something that I want to ask you specifically or mm. something like that. But, yeah. Mm. Cool. That's all the letters, I That's think. That's all the letters. Great. That's all the letters, and that means it's the whole show. Wow. Thank you so much for listening, folks. We appreciate it. I appreciate it too. Uh, come come see me during the Melbourne International Comedy Festival, which is next week. I have Look to. No, oh, you don't have to. Thank God. You've seen enough of me this week. <laughs> Uh, folks, uh, thank you for listening. Thank you for telling your friends about the podcast in a positive way because yeah. then they listen and we get more listeners. That's what we like. Don't be rude. That's right. Don't be rude. Uh, and thank you for leaving a five-star review on your podcaster of – not on your podcaster of choice. Could That'd be a be podcaster. Us. Don't write on us. Nah. On your podcast listening device of choice, app, catcher, thing. James, do you have any reviews? I do, yes. Great. I've got two here. This is from Setma who says – Ha, five stars, just in app. You can just do it in app. Ha, five stars. <laughs> amazing 100% time, uh, amazing 100% of time, 80% of the time. Nice. Come for the red eye comic movie news straight into your butthole and stay for the da na 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 What do we rest well today? And no, I did not have a mild stroke writing this. Thank you so much. You're very well. There's things which are no longer in the show. That's right. <laughs> but, uh, this is from Jason. It's an older review, that's why. It's from Jason who uh, from just north of Miami who says, ouch, my butthole. I started listening from the start of the podcast <laughs> for a better rude. understanding of cinema. We shouldn't put that in the podcast. <laughs> for a better understanding of cinema, found in comic book movies. And as I get older, I have less time. And I listen for the summaries of mediocre movies I don't have time to watch. From what I gather, I'm about the same age as the host and I find their energy levels have mirrored mine. 21. What the podcast reminds me, years of age. I'm not alone in getting old and tired. That's right. And if you're not old and tired yet, guess what? You will be. That's summer. right. So just enjoy yourself. <laughs> get on board with it. Yeah. That's my reviews though, Mason. Fantastic. Thank you so much, folks. If you want to get into contact with the show, you can go to weeklyplanetpod at Gmail, at Facebook, at Twitter, at Bandcamp. What? You can join some lovely discussion groups. There's one at the Planet Broadcasting Great Mates Facebook group. There's also a Weekly Planet podcast uh, Discord and subreddit. Subreddit. Uh, subreddit. So Reddit. That's the stuff. If you want to so, uh, follow some people on the socials, first of all, follow Rob Collings, who edits this podcast and does the socials and How makes little do videos and does all kinds of stuff. He's at Raw Collings on Twitter. He's at The Weekly Planet on Twitter. You can also follow me, Wikipedia Brown, on Twitter, Nick Meso on Instagram. James is Mr. Sunday Movies everywhere. How does if he do you want it? to support that, you, you, you you're on the computers and stuff. Oh, yeah. You've got all this stuff here. I'm loading up something now you're going to love, Mason. Okay. Yeah. I'm very excited for that. Uh, folks, if you want to support the show, you can go to patreon.com slash Mr. Sunday Movies. You can chuck in a buck or rather an amount you would not miss. Ooh. Big spenders can go to bigsandwich.co, uh, nine US dollars per month bonus podcast, movie commentaries, early videos, ad free podcast fee feed. Feed. There's not an ad free podcast fee. Oh, I guess fee. Nine, the nine dollars is. Five for fun. Anyway, folks, uh, there's also t shirts at tpublic.com. Just search for the Weekly Planet. How many are there? A million at this point, probably. <laughs> We don't know. <laughs> yeah, maybe. There's official ones. There's fan-made ones. There's ones that are obviously meant to, like, trick people who, who have heard this and they search and it's just a weird um, bootleg one <laughs> that are bad. Yeah. You'll know. Yeah, you'll know. Get, get develop a discerning eye. You'll figure it out. Okay, whatever. That's right. And uh, thank you to The Brute and The Basilisk and Rackham for all our musical themes. Next week is probably another big movie, right? Yeah, we're doing Dungeons & Dragons. Dungeons & Dragons. We've seen it already, but maybe I'll see it again. It's about time. Over. Speaking of Mason, oh yes, is this bloody situation Dungeons and Dragons uh, that video game you're talking Whoa. about? Whoa! Because we're going to start hopefully playing video games um, oh. on um, what's it called? On the big sandwich. On the, on the big sandwich. On the big sandwich. Oh, where, where are you getting that? You getting that off? That's a, just online. Off a Mame or something? Yeah, on some kind of online situation. I love but, an online situation. Because I want to try. And, about it. I want to. I want to try and beat Mario, original Mario, because I said I could. And oh I'm yeah. Not, I don't think I can, Mason. No, you said you said not only that you could, <laughs> you said. That you could do it in world record time. I said I could do it and I, and I wouldn't practice and I could still do it. It's, you said all those things, yes. <laughs> I did actually say That's that. right. 
And, like, you didn't specifically denigrate the people who have already broken those records. I mean, I could have, it's but implied. I chose not to. It's implied, yeah. though, isn't it? It's implied in saying what you're saying there. <laughs> you very, very dismissive, I think, you don't believe achievements. Me? Oh, which character am I going to be? Am I going to be an orc or an elf or a man or a different man? I'll be this man. Nice. What's this guy? Okay, well, you're already, you're already disassociating from the podcast, so I think that's the end of the podcast. <laughs> There's too many characters in this goddamn game. Disagree. What am I, what's this? <laughs> okay. Uh, grab that gem, you guys. We'll see you next week. <laughs> Sorry. I just started playing a video game. You sure did. Goodbye. <laughs> you been tested for stuff? No, not, not, not anything. I should be. All right. Goodbye. Okay, bye.